It's mighty fine afternoon to you. You're listening to Edge Radio 99 M. My name is Alistair. I'm anchoring what is the final broadcast for the year for the Co-op Toyota Hobart Football Club. We're up at the TCA ground in the domain. And today it is a game against the Lindisfarne 2 Blues. Can you define, Josh, my dotiful commentator, what the two blues is all about? I think it is literally just that. Um, the the two, two shades of blue, they've got the lighter blue and the navy stuff. Oh, really? I thought there might be like two Lindisfarne teams or something, but no. They're the two blues, two shades of blue. Free police thing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> We're up here in what's a very sunny TCA ground on the Domain in Hobart. Um, pretty good weather for winter, I guess you'd have to say, Alistair. Oh, my God. We're sitting in the uh, Hobart Cricket Club's... Uh, I, I, we thought it was a scorer's box, but with the, the kids' match down on the floor, maybe it's just where the kids hang out. Yeah, it's not child's play today, though. We've got the big game here. Top of the table, Lindisfarne Blues taking on Colt Tot. Toyota Hobart Tigers, and um, the Tigers got a big one last week beating New Norfolk Eagles, but... Yeah, totally. Uh, we're up at Boyer. Uh, Matt, perhaps you caught the broadcast. Uh, we broadcast live from Boyer over on the Norfolk. Uh, it, was, it was a great day for the uh, the Tigers, wasn't it? Yeah, well, they just they probably a little bit undermanned, but they just played good footy all day and they got the result. They sort of never really looked like losing, but they never got sort of massively in front either, so it was a really good game. Yeah, uh, and there was, like, at least with five minutes to go, there was still a chance that the New Norfolk could have sprung... Uh, a win on the for the cards, but uh, look, let's forget about the past. Let's talk about the future. The game today, top of the table, Lindisfarne. Can Hobart possibly roll the undefeated Lindisfarne Two Blues? I'm not going to tick a sh- tip a shock upset here, but I think the Tigers will be looking to give them a run for their money, and they need to they need to be competitive here. Uh, they've got an average percentage, and they need to try and stay in touch with that top five with only a few games to go. So. Mm. Uh, look, I'm not going to tip an upset either, but uh, the thing we like is competition and we just want it to be close, even if uh, HFC go down. But, hey, a shock upset could be on the cards, coming off a great win from New Norfolk last week. So you see now the umpires entering the field and uh, Linda's fun uh, already warming up, running the laps around the square now. See uh, big fellow Toddy Willing is back into their side. Um, if you caught the Hobart and Lindisfarne clash earlier in the year, a little bit of a one-sided affair, which we broadcast, um, you may have noticed that he was an absentee. Um, unfortunately for the Tigers, he's back in today. Um, a bit of a man mountain and he'll probably do a bit of damage for Lindisfarne. But um, Young captain Troy Cunliffe, pretty good as well. Also, both former Tigers players, interestingly, uh, back in the statewide league days. Um, Troy Cunliffe puts his head over the footy. And gets a lot of the gets a lot of the footy. So uh, he was a regular name last time these two sides played. So oh, there's, there's the drum. There's the drum as the Tigers enter out onto the field now. Um, Jungle Steve Dennehy, very passionate supporter. Uh, been to a lot of games and a lot of years of footy. So hopefully they can make the most of that early inspiration there as they run out now onto the field, led by Captain Sam Reeves. We've got a big day today for uh, both clubs. We've got a match in. Uh, Raising awareness for gastrointestinal cancer. Yeah, so Lindisfarne are. Uh, that's that's what they're uh, promoting at the moment today, aren't they? Yes. Well, their um, former or well, former parent and volunteer and supporter of current player Case Miller, his father Mick Miller, I believe may have been on the Lindisfarne board. Um, unfortunately, passed away last year from um, esophagus cancer, which is a type of gastrointestinal cancer. So both clubs will be wearing green armbands today to mark their respects and to raise awareness for the cause. Yep, so we've got an interview to play at half-time uh, surrounding that particular issue. So do stay tuned at half-time. We'll have... Uh, who was the interview with? With Celeste Miller, a former board member of Lindisfarne Football Club and daughter of Mick. Excellent. Um, she's certainly done a very good job. And both clubs last year raised a similar similar cause and they raised $12,000. So we've got... Um, I'll give a, just a commercial plug here. I'll give Slater and Gordon a pat on the back because they're donating $100 for every goal... I think it's two hundred dollars. Sorry for every goal that Lindisfarne kicks to the Gastrointestinal Cancer Foundation. So well done to them. Okay, excellent. Well done, Slater and Gordon. Uh, just looking at the field today, uh, the uh, the Tigers, uh, the boys are down in front in uh, the goal square. We're actually sitting at the um, uh, would you call it the city end? 
Yeah, I guess the city end in the old uh, HC Smith stand. For those of you familiar with the TCA ground, the old cricket cricket rooms. Um... The TCA is looking a little worse for wear today, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, there's very big spots of mud there. It's sort of um, it's not looking too moist across the ground, but there's very massive patches of just mud that look like the players it's are going to sink into. The entire mid square is just brown. Yeah, it's certainly going to be interesting. Uh, there'll be a few slip ups today. Um, a few muddy jumpers as well to wash afterwards. I would have thought. I just chuck my keys down. Uh, so, Josh, hey, I'm not a, a massive football commentator, unfortunately. So you're going to be winging it. You're going to be leading the charge for this first quarter. We do have um, last week's surprise commentator to uh, get back on the radio at a quarter time, though, don't we? Yep, Alex Fitzgerald. Um, he did a good job last week. We've invited him back. Um, the listeners were pretty happy with his efforts last week, so a little bit more banter to come from him. He's just finished up playing in the reserves, uh, who unfortunately went down to Lindisfarne, um, 4 10 34 to 14 17 101. So a big win there for Lindisfarne in the reserves. As we see now, we've probably got another couple of minutes, and um, the players going through literally their final final warm up now. A bit of a bumping from Lindisfarne, and a bit of, a bit of kick to kick in lanes for the Tigers now. So, so uh, how many games have we got left in the season for the Tigers? I believe it's three. They've got to buy next round. I'll just um, check that one up quickly. I just wanted to, because this is our last broadcast for this season, uh, the Tigers potentially are not paying finals uh, this season. Um, how are we summing up the season for the Tigers? Oh, well, we started off really well, and uh, we were in third position at one stage. Um, a few injuries, and I guess um, a bit of loss of momentum, and had a bit of a bad run there before last week. Fallen away a bit. I guess we're close, but not close enough at the moment. Um, we'll get a shock win today. Might put us back in finals contention or results go away. We might scrape through to fifth. But at the moment, it's like the Tigers probably miss out on percentage for the finals. So, mm. so Tigers are in the huddle and at the other end of the ground, Lindisfarne, two blues. I think they're going to... I think they finished their huddle. And Team Green in the middle, the umpires... Yeah, we've seen now the Lindisfarne players and the Hobart players joining them to take their positions. Well, Hobart will be kicking to, I guess, the Athletics track end of the ground or the Newtown end of the ground, northern suburbs end of the ground, if you'd rather. <laughs> trying to picture it. The yeah. northern end. Yeah, well, you could call it the northern. Well, the northern suburbs. Yeah, you're probably right. And Lindisfarne kicking towards the city end, I guess. So the Cenotaph end of the ground, if you'd rather. See now, not, not a lot happening here at the TCA at the moment, but it's all about to get underway. Uh, if you'd like to send us a message during the broadcast, the number is 0427 334 Send us an, an SMS message. Uh, if you've got a question, if you uh, want to find out something in particular or if you just want to make a comment, that is 0427-EDGE-FM if you're rocking an old Nokia phone. 0427 334 336 Umpire's nearly ready. We are, and um, I think the, the crowd member just alluded to there, big man Jared Horton back in for the Tigers. Um, a late withdrawal for our commentary team last week, but he's back in now, so playing the game. Here we go now. The ball up, is, and we're underway now. It looks like Hobart might have got the first tap there. It's away for Lindisfarne, though. They get the early clearance and come inside 50 now. There's a quick handball there. It's kicked long inside 50 towards full forward. Is it for Zachary? I think Blair for Zachary takes a mark for Lindisfarne 20 metres out straight in front, and he should go back and slot an early one here. And uh, if he's accurate, he could probably get you between the eyes, Josh. Yeah, he might just get me between the eyes. A bit of a sheet of glass here, which hopefully is nice and rigid. <laughs> just tap it there to make sure. Well, the building's been here for uh, probably over 100 years. Whether or not the glass has been there for that long. It takes a little bit of angle on the run-up, unusually. But the kick doesn't take too much an angle. It's through. He's got the first one. Lindisfarne are on the board there. Only probably about 20 seconds there to score the first one. And they're away 1-0-6 with the Tigers yet to score. See a little bit of pushing and shoving there, but we'll go back to the middle now and we'll go again. Hopefully a um, better start for the Tigers from this one. See uh, big Toddy Willing up in the ruck there for Lindisfarne Blues. And he's taking against familiar, familiar fr former friend now foe, Jared Horton. They both played together at the Tigers. Um, both used to compete for that number one ruck spot. So, See now Willing gets the hit away out for Lindisfarne. And there's a kick away quickly back on that left foot inside 50 now. Lindisfarne here may have another one early. The ball's deep inside the forward line. Newman pushes his opponent over and picks the ball up now with a handball from Campbell. 
He handballs to Woods now. Woods is on the run. He wheels to the boundary and then handballs to Newman. He handballs long on the left into Jared Horton, who's caught stationary here. Gets the arms up and manages to take it over as he's tackled. Probably got away with one there. I thought he was under the pump with that handball. Tell you what, Lindisfarne are not messing about. They've got the ball very quickly up into their their forward line. You can see now the ball's thrown in probably 70 metres out on the wing in front of the Power Pasco Payne stand here at the TCA ground. Willing gets another hit out and there's a second hit up now. And Hobart taking the ball away through Shane Bradford. There's a scrappy handball there as he's tackled and it's picked up off the ground by Ali now. He gets a quick tackle away here. It's Newman is tackled with the ball for the Tigers, but he looks like he's got it out in time. And Linda's far now through David Clark. Errol kicks long inside 50 now. He's in the exactly direction again, but it won't quite go to hands and out of bounds on a bounce for a throw in. Right in front of us here in the left forward pocket for the Lindisfarne Blues now. We see now Fitz uh, getting near the stoppage here, and the Tigers will need a big one from him. He's on Troy Cunliffe, so two pretty good players manning up there. It'll be interesting to see who makes the most of that. Had a bit of volleyball there with a couple of punches through the air, and uh, fizakli has got it now for the Blues, and he's tackled by Alex Stevens. now. We'll have another stoppage in an identical position. Do you know our first, our first broadcast uh, between the, the two Blues and uh, the Tigers, we got almost a record amount of stoppages, didn't we? Yeah, I remember saying it was a world record at the time, so um, maybe more of the same. We'll have to find out here. Looks like Fitz has got it away for the Tigers. He's got it to Ali now. He handles to Sullivan, who gets probably an... Un- characteristically sloppy kick away there but it's picked up now by Reeves I think and he's tackled by three players right in the mud on the wing there as he falls over and we'll have another stoppage on the right hand wing for the Tigers Then it's fine with a hit out now and I think it's Troy Cunliffe does a little spin as he nearly falls over in the mud and he gets a handball away now before a kick back across to the middle of the ground for Lindisfarne where it is marked by Scott Bester. He puts it across the right side of the field now. It's in the direction of Matthew Tringrove, who can't take the mark, and it's off the ground now. Michael Clark, not the cricketer, handballs as we see a kick inside 50 for Lindisfarne there. It's off Woods' hands, out of bounds in the right-hand pocket this time for Lindisfarne Blues. So making all the play early is Lindisfarne here. And the Tigers have not really, not actually been inside 50 yet, so... They need to, they've got their work cut out here and Backman are under a lot of pressure early. See both Ruckman miss it. We've got a quick kick away. It's, not gone, it's gone about 10 metres, about 20 metres in the air now. It's in dangerous position here. The Tigers got the ball. Can't quite clear it out there as it's wrapped up for another stoppage. Another ball up there, and Lindisfarne hit out before Flanagan kicks away for the Tigers. It's a rush kick, almost goes straight to the opposition, but bounces short. I think it's Newman over it for the Tigers. He gets tackled pretty quickly. Another a couple of players falling over, and another tackle. Huxley's got it now. He gets a quick handball out for the Tigers. But Lindisfarne has the ball now, and they kick it across the face to the flank, and where it can't quite be run onto by Case Miller, who's the son of Mick Miller, who we mentioned earlier. So he'll be... Um, looking for a big game in memory of his father here today. See the ball thrown in now from about 55 out for the Lindisfarne Blues. And the sun is most definitely shining here as it looks like Troy Cunliffe can't get it for the Tigers but he's absolutely smashed Mark Young there and the ball spills free and goes out of bounds for a stoppage. So Lindisfarne inching about 20-25 metres closer to the goals there with that one so couldn't quite get the ball but a big tackle there and He's up and about early is Troy Cunliffe once again. See now the ball is thrown in once again. There's fists flying and the ball is knocked flying. Jack Anning can't quite run onto it for the two blues and it's out of bounds in an identical spot here. Uh, not so many ball ups but a few throw ins early again Alistair. Mm, well, it's looking like uh, we're at the right end for at least the start of game doesn't it? Yeah, we might have to swap ends at, um, for the second quarter at this rate, but we'll see how we go there. <laughs> see now a kick away from the clearance. It's gone across the left-hand side. Woods will pick it up in the back line for the Tigers. He, he gets bumped over and gets a quick kick out. Brenton Alley can't take the mark, but he's brought it to ground now. It looks like Fazakali's picked it up again for Lindisfarne. As David Clark puts it on the right boot from the pocket, it makes the goal line, but it's marked by McGee for the Tigers in defence. He kicks it very averagely. And it's made it to Campbell Short, who handballs out wide, and Mark Young takes it over the boundary line as he grabs the footy 
So a little bit of sloppy kicking there from the Tigers. Probably not what you want in the defensive goal square, but they've gotten away with it now. They'll throw it back in. From my uh, very average uh, analysis of the game so far, a bit, bit scrappy from the Tigers, isn't it? It's, uh, they're getting the ball movement kind of um, working, but they're certainly not getting the kicks in, are they? No, they're certainly not. As you see now, Woods is tackled and um, drops the ball there, so it'll be a free kick to Michael Clark, probably 35 metres out straight in front for Lindisfarne. So he's one of two brothers. His brother's with David Clark, who I'll often refer to as Errol, who also used to play at the Tigers, and they both returned to Linders Farm this year. So having a good year by all reports is Michael Clark. Now, he... the players moving around clubs, it's not because they've moved, they've just taken up residence in different clubs? Oh, in the case of um, those guys, um, certainly oh. David, as we see, he gets the goal there, does Michael Clark. Um, David Clark used to play for Hobart when we were back in the statewide league, so um, he went back to play with Lindisfarne, who he played with before um, before he came up to the state league. And I, I can't can't comment for his brother. I think he come, might have come back from Clarence or something. But so a lot of players um, with ties with different different clubs. Um, they, yeah, their family was all tied up with Lindisfarne before. David came to Hobart for a while there and um, Toddy Willing was also tied up with Lindisfarne before he came to Hobart to have a crack at statewide footy and um, we're back, back a level now so we're back in the same competition as some of these clubs. So. OK, yeah. Obviously uh, also SFL competition uh, evolving. Uh, it's ever evolving. You see yeah. McGee Hamble's now in the back line for the Tigers. Gets across to Campbell at full back. He kicks now. It's marked by Newman there so that was pretty quick from the stoppage again by Lindisfarne. Didn't even get to call any of the play. <laughs> See now, Newman kicks now long and wide for the Tigers. It looks like it's headed in the Fitz direction. No, I think it's, I think it's Nichols. In fact, the other other ball man is it's Nichols now, and he'll take the kick here. Puts it on the right boot. It goes about 25 metres. There's about five blokes there, and no one can quite take the grab. You see, Lindisfarne bringing it out now. It's cunley has got it there with the man bun. He gets uh, probably a bit of a throw slash handball away, and he's got it back again now. He runs onto it, handball through the middle. Here's Joey Miller for Lindisfarne here. Kicks long inside 50. Another mark taken by Justin Myers this time. So certainly a lot of experience with the footy now, playing a number of years for Lindisfarne. Has Justin Myers, and he goes back. Probably the old 45-degree uh, angle here. 30, 35 metres out. He's got a couple of big treks of mud to walk through on the way in here, so you want to watch out he doesn't slip over. See the kick there on the left? It's a pretty no, good it's kick. Straight, it's straight through it's the middle. true, yeah. Not an issue with that one there. All in a day's work. If we see uh, Tigers in a little bit of trouble here early as Lindisfarne shoot out to 3 0 18 to Hobart 0 0, yet to score, and in fact, yet to enter inside 50, so they've got a lot of work to do. The Fords are getting a bit hungry up the other end of the ground. It certainly has spent a lot of time uh, down here at the city end, and we're getting a, a cracking view of it. Uh, we'd like to see the ball take some, spend some time up at the uh, the other end of the, the field, though. Yeah, it might make things a little bit more interesting. Um, Lindisfarne stretching their legs, though. Yeah, they're, they're showing why they're undefeated early on. As we see now, it looks like Nichols has got it for the Tigers. He gets uh, caught holding... No, it was Fitz, in fact. He gets caught holding the ball, so Lindisfarne now will bring it back. Don't forget, if you've got any questions, 0427 334 It's a quick SMS. kick inside 50, and it's marked by Troy Cunliffe for the man bun. He's um, cheekily handballed it off. He's handed it off to his mate there. I'm not sure if there was a free kick to Matthew Tringrove or whether or what quite happened there, but Tringrove now lining up. Probably 40 metres out on a diagonal again. Um, he'll probably kick it straight to me again through the glass here as he goes back now and lines up, looking to make it Lindisfarne's fourth. Oh. It's going to the right there, so he's got the first behind of the day, has Matthew Tringrove. Oh, he's letting the team down. So though Lindisfarne now moved to 3 1 19, Hobart yet to score, as Luke Sullivan looks to kick back in, and he's blinded by the sunlight here at the, the Sun Bowl, as um, Rod Hunt would call it, here at the TCA ground. Kick's gone wide to Stevens, but he can't take it. It's spoiled by Cunliffe now, they're both over the footy. Stevens flung to the ground, gets a quick handball away now. The ball goes forward for the Tigers, a short handball by Flanagan, but. Uh, Brenton Alley can't run onto it there, and it's out of bounds for a throw in. So it's me banging on my microphone. <laughs> just, just making sure I'm awake here through the headset. And see, Horton gets a head out for the Tigers now as a 
There's a lot over the footy. Hordo's tackled without it there, and looks like I think it's Fitz has jumped on it for the Tigers, but no clear possessions coming yet. To see a handball now from Jack Annings brings it out for Lindisfarne. There's a short handball over the top, and a big hit there. I couldn't quite see who laid, who that was laid on, but it's knocked over the over the boundary line for another throw-in. So. Lindisfarne having everything their own way so far. Yeah, they certainly are, and they've got it again here. As we see, Case Miller now kicks inside 50 from the clearance there. It bounces. It can't quite be run onto by Oliver Rand. See, Cunliffe tackle with it and spills out. McGee now to clean up for the Tigers. He handballs wide and quickly. Newman runs onto it, takes some time now with the block. Gets around one, wheels it out to the boundary line for a short 10-metre kick along the ground there. Bit of, a, bit of sort of snap out of defence under pressure. It was in the McGee direction, and he couldn't hold on to it, so out of bounds for a throw-in again. So Lindisfarne making it very hard to get the ball out of this defensive 50 for the Tigers here. And we see every time the ball was around, Cunliffe has either got it or he's smashing someone who has it. So he's um, had a lot of impact early on. Exactly the handball out now for Lindisfarne. Quick kick away. I think it was Justin Myers there. Through to the right for a behind. And Lindisfarne had their second behind. Campbell quickly kicks himself and plays on. Puts it long now in the Nichols direction there. Big fist flies and the ball heading towards the boundary line. Can Gray keep it in for the Tigers? No, he can't. He punches it and it goes out of bounds. Seems to be a lot of very very rushed plays from the, the Tiger boys. They are perhaps making some poorer decisions on uh, getting the ball out of this part of the ground. It's just a class of Linders fun at the moment, just the sheer pressure they're putting on the Tigers. Every time they get the footies, we see now... The Tigers pick the footy up through Nichols and he gets grabbed straight away with it. And we'll have another ball up. Oh, I should be counting this ball up, shouldn't I? Yeah, well... <laughs> you have another world record. Ran out of fingers already, so uh, a few early. You see now, it looks like Nichols might have been tackled without it there and Fitz tries to get it for the Tigers. But Linda's fine picking up again. A few people falling over in the mud here. And there's a couple of scrappy kicks now. We've moved about five metres forward and... Everybody jumps on the footy once again. We'll have another ball up. See now, Tigers are struggling to get the ball away from the clearance here. So they're on the they're on the defence to start with. You see now, someone's tackled without it by Bradford and the Linda's fine. Get the clearance away back inside fifty again. Woods and Campbell run into each other for the Tigers as the ball rolls on inside fifty for Linda's fine. Looks like Matthew Phillips couldn't get it there for the fine. As you see, Newman handles now to Woods, clears for the Tigers with a bit of a short kick as he's bumped as he kicks it now. Fist on the ball, and Lindisfarne player in Jack Anning carries it out wide and then fumbles at the last moment before taking it over the line for another throw in. Got to watch out for these Lindisfarne boys. I looked away for a moment, and the ball was in the other end of the field when I looked away, and as soon as I came back, it was in the, this half of the field. See now Reeves handball and then a kick from Ross Hugo clearing for the Tigers. Brendan Alley picks it up. I think he gets a quick handball away as he's tackled and the ball goes out of bounds in front of the Hobart Interchange bench. Just about as far as they've been forward so far this game. Right on the halfway mark of the field. See a big throw in there from the umpire. Obviously been lifting the weights this week but no one can get on the tap now. And looks like there's a few over it again but um, a tackle from Bradford. No, a tackle from Alley now. Alley handballs to Godfrey who... Handballs to Ross Hugo who kicks and to Mark to Fitz for the Tigers. He kicks long inside, not that long in fact. Kicks short, looks like Reeves has picked it up for the Tigers there. He marks. He's got the oh, Tigers yeah. first. Uh, they're on the board now, uh, the co-op to out of Hobart Tigers. They have woken up the goal umpire at the under, other end. And we see now Lindisfarne 3 2 20 leading Hobart 1 0 6. About 15 minutes into the match if you've just tuned in. Edge Radio, 99.3 FM. Uh, this is the match between uh, the Co-op Toyota Hobart Tigers and the Lindisfarne 2 Blues. Hope you're enjoying the coverage so far. My name's Alistair. I have Josh Munting with me. Doing a sterling job on the call, Josh. Yep, and we'll be joined very shortly, hopefully. Thanks, Fitzgerald. So we see another ball up in the middle of the ground now. And it looks like, um, looks like Cunliffe gets another one away. For the Blues early and um, we'll have another stoppage probably in the middle of the square again. No, it comes out through Cunliffe. He gets a kick away inside 50. 
Matthew Phillips can't take the mark, but was he held by Woods? Yeah, we hear the whistle go. In fact, he was held by Woods, and there'll be a free kick about 35 metres out. So, Windows Farm just absolutely dominating those clearances early in the match, and they come inside 50 again. Well, First him. message in via the SMS line, which is 0427 334 Glad to hear the Sun Bowl live. Of course, this is uh, probably Rod. Yeah, I think that one would be Rod. Uh, how yeah. are you, Rod? <laughs> Hope that Sunny. Very sunny down here. Beautiful in down here. Um, for you, Rob, Rod, and um, we certainly do love having your support. And hopefully, uh, next season we get you back on the microphone. Uh, Matthew Phillips there, just kicking a goal from Indus Fun there, just their casual four one support now. They're out to four two twenty six. Hobart just the one scoring shot and the one goal on six. We see now early on in the match. Dominating the clearances. In fact, nine, inside 50, sorry, 9 to 1, I think it was. You see now, they look like another one here. Like a couple of handballs out. There's a kick now from Luke Briggs. Comes across the field, heading towards the half court. By Justin Myers. He's already got a goal early. Kicks it on the left, across the face, a bit inside 50, deep. It's in the direction of Michael. He can't take the grab, but there's handball now. Nick Hutchinson's linked up a couple of times in the play with handball. The Stevens kicks down, clear for the Tigers, but doesn't go too far. It's back in now for Minders A couple of handballs come. Lift's got it now. He handballs out wide. David, David Clark kicking now, and he's got the free man in Justin Myers. 20 metres out on an angle. That was great vision there to spot him up. Could have blazed away and had a shot. Beautiful Could ball have. movement from Minders uh, It zigzagged across their forward line, and they eventually found the free man. And they're doing damage early here, um, certainly denting Hobart's chances very early in this match at this stage. And something's got to change here, I think. You see, as he comes in now, and he's, in fact, put it through for another one. That is his second as the ball hits the roof just above my head there in the yeah. <laughs> I don't stand. I don't know whether you guys can hear that. That's the ball right near our effects, Mike. And we're right here in the action here at Edge Radio 99.3 FM. If you've just tuned in, we're at Hobart and Lindisfarne at the TCA ground. It's certainly very sunny. I may have to take this jumper off very soon, um, oh. which is a rarity in this day and age in Hobart in the middle of winter. So, It's definitely the sun bowl today, despite uh, the ground looking a little bit muddy. Yeah, certainly worse where... See, now Lindisfarne with another clearance. So they're, um, Big Todd Willing now will kick inside 50 for Lindisfarne. It's gone to the right a bit. It might get marked here. You know, it hasn't quite been marked by Michael Clark. It's out of bounds for a throw-in right next to the behind post on the right-hand side. So Lindisfarne racing away early to a fairly sizable lead, in fact. They've got 5-2-32 to Hobart Tigers, 1-0-6. We're not quite on the right angle to be able to read the scoreboard huh? here, are we? No, not quite. I'll have to have to keep notes as we go. So you see now Newman looking to get it out for the Tigers. He dances and gets a handball short to McGee. He takes a run and he kicks now onto the wing. It's headed in the Godfrey direction, but he can't take the mark as he falls over his opponent there. Looks like Willing's got it back for Lindisfarne. He gets a handball away as he's tackled by a couple. And a handball from Howe now. There's another quick handball there. I didn't see who it was. Looks like a Hobart player's got the ball quickly and been taken high. Is Bryce Apted? He handballs now, and he handballs to Newman, who handballs. There's another handball there for the Tigers. I think it's Fitz, perhaps. And we see now the ball is sort of in in congestion here, and no one's quite making another clear disposal. Thought it was going to pop out for a moment, but we've got yet another ball up right in front of the two interchange benches. In fact, it is a throw-in, not a ball up. Now the long throwing coming in. Horton push, pushes his opponent out of the way and gets the hit out there in the ruck for the Tigers. But Lindisfarne getting another... No, they're not getting another clearance. In fact, it was Campbell with a handball for the Tigers. And then we've got another a kick from Stevens now. It's marked by... I can't quite see who that is in the sunlight. In fact, it is Sam Reeves for the Tigers now. Bring it in inside 50. Can't quite take a mark there. Sam Godfrey runs onto it there with those long locks. A bit of a mullet there. He kicks what? Why it trickles out of bounds for a throw-in in the right pocket for the Tigers. So really the Tigers' first actual entry there. Yeah, you had the right, right idea. Kicked it, kicked it straight across the front of the goal. 
Yeah, so the Tigers with a one goal on the board, but uh, that was pretty much a shot from about 40 metres out, <laughs> so they're actually making the four line work a bit here now. But Lindisfarne bring it straight back out, in fact, from the stoppage, and they go long. Looks like Stevens might get there for the Tigers. Yeah, don't blink, guys. Uh, Lindisfarne have no. already got it past the half line. Newman, Newman handball, handball, I think a Campbell handball there as well. Now we've got another quick tackle here, and the, looks like Mark Young over for the Tigers. Might have thrown it out there, sort of bobbed out the back. In fact, we've got another ball up once again, 50 metres out from Lindisfarne on the left-hand flank. Uh, Tigers getting away now. Hugo probably taking high, but he gets a handball right now, and it looks like Clark will kick back for Lindisfarne. It's a very t- very high kick, the ball sort of facing out and horizontally, and it's marked by McGee, who switches it to the other back pocket for the Tigers. Coming out the left-hand side now, a lot of space in front of Woods on the wing here. As Woods runs on the ball, picks it up now. Kicks it on that right foot right out to the interchange gates there. I think it was Godfrey no, or Ali. I can't quite tell there. I was going to say can't quite take the mark, but it is, in fact, on the full there. It was Sam Godfrey couldn't take the mark there. It was Lindisfarne looking to bring it back in now through Matthew Hutchinson, I believe. No, no, not Matthew Hutchinson. In fact, Case Miller will bring it back in for the Lindisfarne two blues here. He kicks now. He brings it into the middle of the ground. There's an uncontested mark there to Matthew Hutchinson. He's had oh a little dear. bit of early, a, a wobbly kick, very short inside 50 now. And the Tigers will clean up. A couple of handballs there, but not the smartest of handballs now. And then just find get the kick away. Through Tringove. He couldn't do much with it, though. It's come out of the pocket now. It's on the ground. It's kicked by Myers. It's marked by McGee for the Tigers in defence, just outside the full back there. Campbell's to Campbell, who kicks long now. He's got Brenton Alley on his own. He's got a paddock in front of him here. Gets those legs moving and kicks now down the line. It's headed to Reese. It's marked by his son again, I tell you what. It's marked by Godfrey again. He kicks now out wide. He's got Alley in the sleeves, but the, the oh, big good. diving spoil in front of the inter- Lindisfarne interchange bench there, and uh, we'll have some, another throw in. That's a commitment from the Lindisfarne to uh, spoil that mark there. Yeah, it was pretty fearless. I don't think he had much thought for self-preservation in that case, and um, he's got all, the result. It was almost like uh, some extreme frisbee going on there. <laughs> it's a very extreme frisbee there. <laughs> you see now the ball's thrown back into play. It looks like Hobart with the hit out, but they're just struggling to get these clearances early on. And we see Linda's fine again, just getting first use of the footy now. A couple of tackles and um, not much happening, but we'll have another ball up here. We've just tuned in. Lindisfarne racing out to an early lead. They're 5 2 32. The Hobart Tigers are 1 0 6. About 23 or 24 minutes in here at the TCA ground. See, Newman gets a handball there out the back for the Tigers. He handles to Alley, who handles back to Newman, who handles back to Alley, in fact, who gives a short handball. It was meant for Reeves, I think, but he's a cop one high there. And he will get a free kick here for the Tigers on the wing, just on the edge of the centre square, really, on the left hand side. There's a lot of players moving around now, but there's not really any options on here. We see Reeves kicks it long and down the line. And in fact, marked by a Lindisfarne player there. Cleaning up in the defensive 50. They might come back out the same way. No, he goes short and brings it in a little bit. I think it's Joey Miller, the recruit from Hobart City, who's had a pretty good year, but now puts it on the left and comes out the left-hand side for the two Blues. It is uh, Luke Briggs now kicking there and inside 50. David Clark marks. He handles to his mate in Troy Cunliffe. He kicks it long from 50. It's gone to the right for a behind. Thought Troy Cunliffe was going to get on the board there. Well, he has got on the board, but he's only only got a behind to his name so far. I wonder if the man bun affected him. Yes, the man bun may have affected him. No, he's been playing very well this year. As we see now, Campbell brings it back in for the Tigers. He kicks wide. As he plays on himself, kicks wide to McGee, who's crawling there just to keep the ball... <laughs> Keep the ball in front of him and he takes it over the line just. I think he's in trouble if he didn't. It was two on one. It was uh, Tringrove and I think Matthew Jarvis were hot on his tail there. So, See, now it's thrown back in and Willing. No, it looks like Horton's got the hit out there for the Tigers. It's coming to Lindisfarne through Jack Annie. He got a quick handle on it, but it was cleared by Flanagan with a big kick for the Tigers now. And Reeves has picked it up on the wing there and kicked for the Tigers. He's got Godfrey now. Probably a, half a, probably a short kick from centre-half forward. And he falls over in the mud. He wheels back now onto the right. Did a quick U-turn and puts it to the centre. Looks like an in and jumps for the Tigers, but he hasn't taken the footy there. 
we see Huxley gets a soccer away now. There's a quick kick from Ganinen, but it is to the right for a behind and um, not much of a chance on goal, that shot. We see Hobart moving out to 1-1-7 to Lindisfarne, 5-3-33 now. The breeze picking up a little bit here at the TCA. Yeah, starting to pick up now, but um, pretty good day overall so far. It's certainly for the Blues. Thinking to myself, I'm probably going to need some sunscreen soon. Yeah, um, might be an option, in fact. See now the Tigers intercept now and come back through the middle. I think it's... I'm trying to see in the sun here. It is Huxley has marked for the Tigers at centre-half forward now. He might go back, in fact, probably about 45 metres out straight in front. Looks like he's going to have a shot here. He will amble in on the goal shortly as he just places the football down and fixes his sock for a moment there. At least he's got a sock. I lost mine. <laughs> yeah, well, he could well lose it in the middle of the ground later on uh, in this sort of mud. So, so that, that joke was uh, referring to I didn't have a wind sock for the effects microphone, so I lose my left sock. He lines up now. He kicks. It's a good kick. It's straight through the middle, in fact. The Tigers have got their second for the day now. They're out to 2-1-13 with Lindisfarne 5-3-33 here at the TCA ground. See now a reasonable crowd in here at the TCA ground. We've got a reunion function on as well, so the few of the few of the old boys downstairs for the Tigers were celebrating some of the glory days where uh, a lot of players from the Eastern Shore used to play for the club back in the Risdon Vale sort of era for the Tigers. So how, how long ago were your glory days, Josh? Um, are they still happening, aren't they? Yeah, that's it. I can't remember too many of Hobart's glory days, unfortunately. Got a one when I was six, but I can't remember much of that flag. Um, so you see now the ball's brought back in for, into play now. Lindisfarne just slowly inching forward here. It's Willings running over it. He can't quite pick it up. It looks like now, in fact, fits soccer's at forwards for the Tigers, but it's in the direction of David Clark for Lindisfarne. He hambles back over his head. I think he's got Joey Miller now. No, he's got Cunliffe, in fact. Cunliffe kicks bit into his opponent, and we see now it comes back for the Tigers through Charlie Leak with a short kick there. Another kick there to Gray. Comes inside 50 for the Tigers, but not looking too dangerous here. Lindisfarne just swooping on the ball at every opportunity now. See now there's a free kick for a push in the back. It will go the way of Lindisfarne, who will bring the ball back out through the right-hand side, coming out of half-back. Kick down the line now it's to the interchange gates again. Can't quite go to hands now, and it's out of bounds right in front of the Lindisfarne interchange bench for a throw-in. And Hobart's still struggling to create genuine opportunities here. They've got a couple of goals. Um, they've probably made the most of their chances, but very limited by this uh, Lindisfarne side early. So a few fall over in the stoppage there, and Lindisfarne come now through. Cunliffe handballs to Willing. He kicks long inside 50. Stevens will be looking to contest for the Tigers, but he can't. I think it's Michael Clark handballs now. And it's kicked by Fazakali for Lindisfarne through to the right for a behind. You see now Campbell once again bringing it in for the Tigers. He kicks short to Newman in that back pocket. So the Campbell-Newman combination is back. He pretends to kick long. He runs a few metres and then he kicks long down that line. It's in the Woods direction. But Woods has apparently held out his opponent in Willing. Um, must be stronger than I thought. And he's given away a free kick here to Willing low and short kick into the centre of the ground where Michael Clark overruns it for Lindisfarne. And his counterpart, number six in McGee, handballs now. Campbell runs past him and cleans up the messy handball there. He kicks, he kicks now. He's got Nichols. Nichols finally onto that right now. A little bit of pace there. Comes inside 50 for the Tigers. The ball is on the ground. No one can quite pick it up there. And we see the siren goes for quarter time here at the TCA ground. At the moment, it is the co-op to Hobart Tigers. 2-1-13, trailing the Lindisfarne 2 Blues. 5-3-33 in very sunny and muddy conditions here at the TCA ground. So we'll wrap up things for the first quarter in a moment. You're listening to Edge Radio 99.3 FM. Uh, we've got a message in uh, asking the question, do you think Hobart had l- lost the game mentally before they ran out onto the ground because of the difference in ladder positions? Well, certainly uh, very early. They're not, they're not playing very attacking for footy. Um, I don't think it's a game plan. I think it's they're not getting to the footy first and they're losing those stoppages. So perhaps they... Perhaps they had mentally sort of conceded on this one early on. Well, there's, uh, there's certainly a, a very, very, very uh, strong defence being put on from Lindisfarne, isn't there? 
Yeah, well, um, a very strong side this year, Lindisfarne, and perhaps that, perhaps it's all mental, and perhaps the Tigers need to show a bit of character here in the second and third quarter and get themselves back into this one. So summing up the first quarter, pretty scrappy from the Tigers, pretty but Lindisfarne showing their strength. Yeah, Lindisfarne just putting the Tigers under the pump every time they've got the ball and try to bring it out of the back line, or in every, pretty much every centre stoppage going the way of the Lindisfarne Blues early on. Mm. All right, let's play some music uh, during the break and we'll be back to start the second quarter. Edge Radio 99.3 FM. This is the uh, Co-op Toyota Hobart Tigers playing the new Jets, Lindisfarne 2 Blue. 3 FM. <coughs> My name is Alistair. Uh, I am finally out of a commentary position uh, because football is just... I don't know enough about it. I'm here to anchor the broadcast. This is... The game between the co-op Toyota Hobart Tigers and the new Jet Lindisfarne 2 Blues. Josh. And we're joined now by Alex Fitzy Fitzgerald. So uh, a bit of a disappointment in the reserves for you today, but it's good to see you up here. And, uh... See you, uh, good afternoon, boys. Uh, yeah, uh, great first half from the Hobart co-op Tigers in the reserves game against the Lindisfarne New Jet Blues. Sort of managed to stay with them, um, which is uh, very encouraging, but uh, just... Just fell away in the end there, and they sort of ran over the top uh, to be comfortable winners in the reserves game. So uh, the bye next week, so hopefully uh, the Tigers can freshen up and uh, prepare to challenge for that fifth position. And uh, what do you make of the bye? A uh, bit of a bit of a voodoo in the AFL. Teams probably dropping games they shouldn't after the bye. Do you think it'll affect Hobart after next week, or do you think it'll be probably welcome at this time of the year? Well, I think it's probably welcome given that we've got a few injuries and a few boys away at the moment, Josh. So I believe we'll probably have. Uh, close to 30 players pushing for selection in the resis and uh, yeah it should be tight as well in the senior team so hopefully a few boys can show something in the second quarter here for our duck. So don't forget you can send us a message 0427 334 336 that's an SMS message as the second quarter gets underway And we're away now so Hugo gets a handball for the Tigers he's got it to Pitts I think no it's Nichols in fact perhaps he handballs now it's inside 50 for the Tigers you see the Tigers now trying to pick the ball up here. It's sort of congestion. Lindisfarne getting it there through Cunliffe. Quick handball away there. Looks like Leak trying to pick it up for the Tigers. He can't get on to the end of it. As Trent Clark is tackled with the footy, but he can't do a lot with it now. And it's moved on to the scrum who take it over the line for a throw in here. The Tigers probably a good sign there getting that early inside 50. It probably took them about 10 minutes in the first quarter to manage the same. So. So we've got Fish Reeves in the ruck for the Hobart Co-op Tigers as the ball's not thrown in but uh, balled up five metres inside the boundary on the uh, grandstand wing. Uh, sorry, just inside the Hobart's 50. And a great bump there from Charlie Leake. Uh, sends his Lindisfarne opponent over the boundary line and we'll have another ball up. Yes. Uh, about the 50 about the fifty metre mark uh, on the grandstand wing. He yeah, squared him up well there. A good clean bump on Joey Miller. So he goes out of bounds for another throw in. Fits with a double-handed tap out now. It's in the leak direction. He can't get the footy now. He's currently just got it for the Blues. He's grabbed pretty quickly by Ross Hugo and a couple of other boys join in for a big group hug. We'll have another ball up here at the TCA ground. Looks like Reeves with a quick hit out at the back there. But the Tigers can't quite pick it up. Ganinan's trying, though. He might have been pushed in the back, but it looks like Reeves has got his own hit out in the finish there. He handballs to Fitz, so he can't get a clearance here. He's wrapped up pretty quickly by a few, so probably only 15 metres from the goals here out on the right-hand pocket for the Tigers. Expecting a few stoppages here as the ground's in not in great nick, Josh? No, certainly not. Uh, a bit of a talking point early. It's very, very slippery here. You see Reeves now tackled. He's gone over the footy there off the stoppage. He's been penalised. So we've got Cunliffe uh, with the kick. That's probably a bit stiff there, Josh, I thought, but the umpire probably trying to clear the congestion. Cunley Far kicks across goal now to James Mitchell, who kicks out wide as well, and there's a Lindisfarne mark on the 50 on the uh, cricket net side of the TCA. Yep, and Trengrove kicks long now for the Blues. Comes back a little bit in towards the corridor now. It's spoiled and will come back towards the Tigers' 50, but not far enough now as Lindisfarne bringing it across the ground with a handball there. And it's picked up by Nick Braslin now. He handballs short. He's got Toddy Willing. He kicks it on that right boot and it's going long now for the Blues. You see now he runs past, whoever that was, runs past the footy and gets the kick inside 50 now where it's marked by Stevens for the Tigers. Great contested mark for Stevens. He rebounds quickly, kicks out to the halfback flank, but it's all Lindisfarne at the moment. Actually, Hobart have managed to pick it up. 
right in that bog heap there. I think that was Marcus Fitz works it out. And a kick forward towards the Tigers attacking 50. Now yeah, Lindisfarne bringing it back now through Callum Mitchell. A couple of you know, series of handballs now. He's got James Mitchell, the brother. Gets it on the boot. It's coming in towards the 50. It's now, in fact, Horton kicks for the Tigers. Bringing it across the face there. A little bit dangerous here. I think it's... Who's that taken high with the footy? See who that was, Fitzy? I can't, couldn't tell. A bit of a bright sun here, Josh. But uh, receives a high tackle. And the Tigers work it away to the wing. But they've coughed it up again right in front of the coach's box. And Joey Miller marks the kicks there. Brings it a little bit across. He's got Todd... Big man in Toddy Willing now, who will probably kick down the line here. Kicks across to the right a bit, towards and a half forward. And can't quite take a grab there. Looks like Fitz was forward to ground for the Tigers. But it's come inside, 50 now through a Callum Mitchell kick. And the ball has literally just hit the mud and stopped as it's gone to the ground now. The Tigers looking to bring it out here. I think it's Sullivan. It was kicks. Sullivan. Sullivan kicks out to the left-hand side now. And the Tigers have got a bit of a run on here through Brenton Alley. He kicks long. He's got Reeves, who has two to beat as the ball goes to ground now. He can't beat the two. He lays a tackle. And you can see, see Lindisfarne now coming away with it. Trent Lindisfarne. Clark clearing kick up towards the Lindisfarne attacking 50. It's hit that bog heap again and just completely stopped. Cunliffe over the ball. Tigers appealing for holding the ball. But I think uh, he's paid a high tackle free kick to the Lindisfarne player. In... Looks like it's Michael Clark. Former, Correct, Josh, it is. Former Australian test captain. No, not quite. Uh, missing the E on the end, so just um, shortened the clock. He so. should be in Sri Lanka then, shouldn't he? Uh, no, he's <laughs> playing off in the Caribbean Premier League or something at the moment, I think. Yeah, Isn't he? I thought he was yeah. part of the Australian cricket team now. No, no. He's been retired for a while now. As Lindisfarne run into an open goal and spray it off to the right. So we've got the Hobart Tigers on 2-1-13 and Lindisfarne moved to 5-5-35. About seven minutes into the second quarter up here at the TCA. Uh, the kick in from the Tigers finds Brenton Alley uh, on the half back line who quickly switches it across to Fitz who moves it on to... It's a Jimmy McGee kick there. Back to Alley in the middle. He's got a heap of space. He sent this inside 50 to Nichols, one out. Nichols can't quite get on. I think he's stuck in the mud there, sort of running on the spot now. With Huxley the running into... Ground. Huxley Soccers goes through, going to get enough on it. He's got a free kick. There's Godfrey taking the advantage and misses. No, it's a free kick to Huxley, about 20 metres out for holding the man. So. I think we felt that one hitting the roof underneath us. Probably about to feel it hit the window in front of us here, Alistair, if Dylan Huxley. Well, <laughs> Big target on the through. stats, man. Here. We did feel like we were about targeted a little bit during the first quarter. Yeah, peppered a bit with a few inside 50s from Lindisfarne early in the first quarter. I think Josh has got O'Brien's glass number on speed dial here is... Uh, Huxley lines up from about 20, uh, almost directly in front for the Hobart Cop Tigers. So he should put through their third goal. And he... And perhaps I went to pencil a little bit earlier. So it's gone to the left for a behind. I did, in fact, go to mark it down. I might have put the mockers on him there. Could only be described as a shank there, Josh. As we have Josh Young, the Lindisfarne Josh Oh, almost a great contested mark there by the Lindisfarne player who's ducked his head. Could have been holding the ball, but the umpire's elected to ball that one up there and give him the benefit of the doubt. So Sullivan returns the ball to the umpire, and there'll be a throw up on the Hobart Tigers attacking 50 uh, as that's kicked inside by Ross Hugo to a two-on-one. Nichols can't take the ball away. Reeves is applying some pressure here. Nichols tacks, tackles James Mitchell, and there'll be a ball up again. About... 30 metres out from the Hobart Tigers goal on the grandstand side. The Tigers putting a bit more pressure on this corner, getting a little bit more inside 50, but we see now, as I say, that Case Miller gets the kick away in the clearance for Lindisfarne. Ali tries to mark there for the Tigers. He lays a big tackle now into the back of his opponent, and the ball is jumped on by a lot of people, but it looks like it's come out of there somehow. And it's away through Jack Anning again. A little bit of a dance on, and we come across the face there. Dangerous from Lindisfarne, but Cunliffe's got it now, and that big man bun kicks it, kicks it long to half forward now for Lindisfarne Blues. We've got a kick inside, but it's off off his man, and it come, comes back a degree. See now, I think Wood's over it for the Tigers, and there's a couple, a couple of handballs there. Looks like, uh, in fact... Bradford's clear. Oh, Shawnee yeah. Gray's clear. Yeah, Shawnee Gray clearance there, sorry. And he kicks inside 50, where Reeves takes a two-grab mark. 
about 45 metres out. And and just a shout out, I've been told uh, apparently I've been commenting quite a lot about the sun. So uh, thanks for that feedback there, Tommy. I'll try and note that. So it is very sunny at the TCA ground, just in case any viewers did miss that fact. Well, as our colleague uh, Rod Hunt calls the uh, TCA the Sun Bowl, I don't know whether we should shut up about the sun, though. Yeah, let's. As Fish uh, approaches, about 45 outs, wobbles the kick to the top of the square, but he's done enough, and that's through for the Hobart Cop Tigers' third goal. We see that's Reeves' second for the day so far, so he's, he started well at the moment, but limited opportunities, he's got a couple of stuff. Great reward for effort there for the Hobart Cop Tigers. They've started this second quarter, they've probably had most of the possession, just not able to convert their. Uh, Dylan Huxley maybe shakes his head in the goal square knowing that him and Sam Reeves are pretty close in the goal kicking award, Josh. Yeah, they are uh, neck and neck right now. I did get a message a couple of weeks ago um, just warning me that I missed one of Huxley's goals on the results on Sporting Pulse, so I had to correct that one quickly. Obviously a bit wary that Reeves might have his number. So see now Horton uh, kicks inside you, 50 Josh. for they're the tie. And Bradford oh. Marks kicks it short on the left. He's got Huxley here, so if you're looking to peg back the Reeves one in the, in the stakes... Sorry for the clap there, boys. I got a bit excited. That was brilliantly done by Horton to Bradford uh, to Huxley. So he'll line up almost on the spot from where Sam Reeves kicked that goal, about a 45-degree angle, about 45 metres out for the Hobart Cop Tigers on the cricket net side, as I'm calling it. You got the very oh, slow... The, the riverside? The riverside, yeah. Look, we'll go to the riverside, Alice, there. <laughs> A very slow walk. Not to be technical. Walk in now. He puts it on the right boot. Looks like it's, in fact, Woo! through the middle for a goal. So Huxley is back in the stakes in that chase between him and Reeves. See now the Tigers move to 4-2, 26 to Lindisfarne, 5-5, 35. So they put a bit more life back into the game here, the Tigers. They've got the only two of the second quarter so far. The two, uh, two key forwards, you could say, for the Hobart Cop Tigers. Bit of a one-two act there, so... Rees has his second, and uh, Huxley has his second as well, I believe, Josh. Yep, both getting two each, and uh, just a correction there. Sorry, Lindisfarne, 5 4 34. So only the one behind for them this quarter. There we go. So don't forget, you can send us a message at 0427 334 336. Back to the action. Yeah, now the ball hitting the ground, and Lindisfarne getting a kick away now. It's headed to centre half forward. A couple of grabs on it, and I can't quite see who's taking the mark there, but a very good one. Is it Willing? Quite a big man who's taken the mark about 50 out from, from sure. the Lindisfarne goal. Yeah, it is goal. in fact, it is in fact Todd Willing. I didn't think it was. So he'll probably go back and kick this one. To be honest with you, he's about 50 metres out. He's a pretty big kick, pretty big fella. Puts it on the right boot now. Oh, he in fact um, hasn't gone anywhere near it. It's gone Ooh. to the left and hasn't quite made the distance. But a mark is taken. A Lindisfarne player. Big contested mark there. So he looks to be about on a 45-degree angle on the scoreboard side, probably 20 metres out. Look, in the reserves game, Josh, there were a lot of misses uh, up this end by both teams. So I uh, fingers crossed as a Hobart Co-op Tiger supporter that he'll shank this one. Unfortunately, he's put it straight through the middle. He certainly hasn't missed that one, has he? No, so Lindisfarne, New Jet Blues moved to 6 440 lead the Hobart Cop Tigers 4-2-26. And uh, just in case you uh, missed that one, it was Matthew Tringrove putting through the major there for the two Blues. I've thrown, thrown Dylan Huxley a big thumbs up and he's given me a little wave, which is probably more than I've got for him all year. <laughs> That's a sh- I'm shot just fired here in the commentary box. Just kidding, Hux. You'll listen to this. Just kidding. See now that it's back through the middle now and looks like Ross Hugo might be running onto the Tigers but it's brought away by Lindisfarne now through Matthew Hutchinson. He handballs now and it is in fact kicked away by Nick Braslin. Goes out wide to the right and Matthew Howe takes the mark. He's the coach of the under-18s and he was pretty animated early on in their game. He's turned that one over. So who's this on the wing? Could it be a Mark Young? I think it might be Mark Young. He Kicks now, it's short. It's not a very good kick, in fact. It, Callum Mitchell marks it for the two Blues and brings it across to centre-half back now with a quick kick and mark to Maybe. Nick Hutchinson, sorry. And then he gets a kick away now. No one can quite run onto a soccer there. A couple of handballs now. Picked up by Case Miller. He brings it inside 50. And Mark, Michael Woods takes the mark. I thought it could have been Stuart Patterson. 
But it was Woods as Patterson is out today for the Tigers after a great game last week. Yeah, he certainly had a great game last week. Senior's ball back in for Linders Farm once again after a turnover. And Adam Hutchinson kicks where a mark is taken on the right half forward flank for the Linders Farm Blues. In the area non-affectionately known as the Mud Pit, I believe. Josh, I didn't have fun playing in that region in the previous game. It's brought in now to the Lindisfarne forward line, mopped up, I believe, by Marcus Fitz, and he's delivered a beautiful kick to Reeves, who quickly moves it on to the wing now. Yeah, big sweeping handball there. It looks like uh, Newman picks it up for the Tigers. He gets a run on through the mud somehow, beautiful. kicks inside 50. Oh. The ball's hit the ground and it's come straight back out again. Um, Nichols and Horton, a bit of confusion there. No one wanted to attack it, and the ball's moved on to Matthew Hutchinson, who quickly moves it over to... The captain in Troy Cunliffe gives a Dusty Martin don't argue, moves on to the left, but he's kicked it straight to Woods, who plays on again to the wing. And a great mark taken by Brenton Nally. The great fast-moving football here despite the conditions at the TCA. Yeah, and he kicks short. He's got a contest here. Huxley's beaten beaten to it by uh, one of the two numbers from Lindisfarne there. So I believe it's it was Trent Clark, one of the Clark brothers. Yeah, he's taking a good mark there. He got in front of the forward, so he did really well. A quick handball now, probably putting his mate Case Miller under the pump. He gets a kick out of the way now to the left-hand wing. <coughs> in fact, on the full, I thought it might have been fallen short, but uh, Brendan Alley will bring it back in for the Tigers here, right in front of their interchange bench. He's had a great five minutes, Brenton Alley. He'll run all day, uh, despite the conditions. Yeah, he looks to kick now. He kicks long. He's got a, a big pack there. Probably no one will take this one. We see it comes to ground now. Ganinen looking to do something for the Tigers. Get some sort of... No, he's back caught holding the ball, so... The umpire just wanting to get involved there, Josh, I reckon. Yeah, I, th- I thought he got a kick away, to be honest. He but, did. Um, looks like now Callum Mitchell takes a kick for Lindisfarne. It's down the line. It's back to the Tigers, but it goes out of bounds for a throw in. He's been good, Mitchell, this quarter. Probably some of the Tigers need to stay a bit tighter on. He looks to be patrolling the half-back line as a loose man at the moment, which is something that definitely hurt the reserves. So we'll see if the Tigers could tighten up on Mitchell. So Reeves with the big push out in the ruck now. It looks like Lindisfarne have got another clearance here. And they're coming away through Cunliffe once again. Inside 50, there's a big mark taken there. It's a push out uh, to one of the Tigers defenders. It's quite hard to see. We're not going to mention the sun, but I just did. Uh, it's brought away now to the middle of the ground. Oh, great mark taken by Ganinen, and he's off. There's a switch on here. As two Tigers go, they work it out through voice, and one of them moves on. He's got a 50. I go back now. Called to play on he by the slipped umpire. Over. Go back and kick it. He kicked short. He's got a oh. kick to Huxley who had to beat three. I'm not quite sure what he was thinking. They've all there. fallen over though. So the Tigers have got a bit of a contest. They're frantically trying to work it out. But it, uh, Matthew Howe gets his kick away out to Nick Hutchinson who sprints off and sends Lindisfarne forward towards the mud pit on the 50. But the Tigers are working it away now through Jacob Soup Campbell. Kicks so you- it to Sean Gray and he's He's dumped in a tackle, and it's been rewarded, awarded a push. I oh, know, holding the ball. See so Lindisfarne come inside 50 now. It looks like a mark. No, not quite taken there. The ball is on the ground, not quite picked up by anyone. There's a number of players fall over it here. You see now the Tigers bringing it back out finally. They've got Ali, who's got two to beat. He gets tackled now and stripped of it. But a tackle there from the Tigers by Nichols. Looks like he's gotten him high, so Lindisfarne with a free kick. He quickly plays on now, gets a kick away. Not a very good kick, didn't make the distance from about 20 out. And bounces through for a behind to the left-hand side there. So Lindisfarne moved to 6-5-41, uh, leading the Hobart Cop Tigers 4-2-26. So just a bit of... No one's kicked a goal for a little, little while here up at the TCA, but I'm sure that that could change pretty quickly. As the Tigers move it forward now... They're on the grandstand wing. We've got a bit of a contest, a bit of a, a scrum forming, and uh, the umpire will throw this one up. Yeah, a series of short handballs. Then the uh, pack eventually got it, which seems to be a bit of a recurrent theme today. See, it's balled up now. 
Horton can't get the jump up for the Tigers, but he's got the tap away sort of on the ground. Sullivan gets a short handball away. He's got Ganinan again, I think it is. He kicks inside 50 now. It's going long. It's outrun. Huxley's running onto it. He picks it up. He puts it. He's, oh. hit, the back, he's hit the back of the post there. I actually right on oh, the base oh. here. And, um, he's given away a free kick now as uh, Matthew Howell. 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 Yeah, giving away a 50 for high contact there. I'm not quite sure what happened. but Howell came happened. in to let him know all about it, and Huxley might have caught him high there. Should have, should have kicked that one, Josh. That should have been... Uh, he, he won't be happy about that, Huxley. He'll try and work oh. at a semi. Godfrey takes a turnover, kicks to Nichols alone, all by himself in the square. He handles to Ganinan. Ganinan puts it on the right. It's oh. gone to the left. The boys there, I think, just overusing it. Maybe Nichols could have gone himself or could have laid a block for Ganinan there or could have spot up Fish Reeves, I think. And once They're again, just, it's, sorry. No, oh, just got to settle and compose himself, the Tigers, and, and finish off that great work. Once again, Josh Young bringing in for the two Blues. That's a commanding mark taken by Matthew Tringrove there. He puts it on the right boot now, brings it back into the middle to the Ruckman in Hordo who can't take it for the Tigers and Woods can't get there either for the Tigers. They've got the ball now. There's a big tackle coming through. A series of players falling over once again. A few uh, dinky little handballs and not much going on here. The players flying everywhere, though. It's like watching a heap of magic carp flapping around here at the TCA ground. Yes, I did just make a Pokemon Go reference. Yeah, you had to get in there with the Pokemon reference. Uh, I want nothing to do with it, boys. It's sort of taking over the club a bit. and uh, it's Pokemon is nothing I got into, so I might be a bit of a... Are there any Pokemon to catch here at the TCA? Uh, apparently so. Sometimes you rock up to training, you see the boys in the stands flicking their phones, so I guess that's what they're doing. That or on Tinder. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think Pokemon's taken over. I don't think the boys are after any girlfriend these days. Is, just... is Pokemon Go the new Tinder? <laughs> Text in and tell us what you think. 0427 334 tell, tell us if you've catched uh, Zubat recently. They're oh, ramping up. We'll get flooded with messages now. <laughs> See, another stoppage here, and uh, so not much happening from that throw in. The ball will be balled up in Lindisfarne's forward line here. So the Tigers have just kicked the last two behinds a poster from Huxley and a, and a gate hitter from Ganinan. Woods lays a tackle now. The Tigers will be looking to capitalise on the loose ball here. I think Ganinan sort of flicks it under the hand there in the alley direction. That's the long sleeves as Godfrey picks it up and gets it to Fitz. He gets it to Huxley. The ball's on the ground. Now he can't bend over and pick it up. Was he taken high there? He sort of spots the ball oh away to Godfrey. Oh boy. Godfrey kicks inside 50. Reeves can't take the mark. Was he tripped there he, as he falls over? A big tackle there from James Mitchell. There's a soccer off the ground from Gray, who runs from the third man up sort of position. A through to the left for a behind for the Tigers there. A bit of an Eddie Betts-like effort there from Shawnee Gray, but not much else on, so well within his rights to have a go. As... Uh, We've got Case Miller brings it in. Beautiful kick and finds Cunliffe at about the defensive 50. Plays on quickly. He's got numbers on the wing. And there's a mark taken out there by, not sure, maybe Matthew Jarvis moves it on. The Blues are kick it to the top of their goal square. And they've taken a mark about 15 metres out on the riverside. Who is it, Josh? You've got the binoculars there, the trusty it's binoculars. Fine. In fact, Justin Myers, who's already kicked two goals one, so he's had a little bit of it early. And he, uh, he should go back and slot this one. Um, they probably need a major here that um, let the Tigers back into it just a bit. But A veteran of the Lindisfarne New Jet Blues is Myers. Yeah, he certainly had a few games of experience here, and I wouldn't put it past him to kick this one. He's, he's uh, done it justice, and he's put it through there. Beautiful left boot there. So... Lindisfarne move on now. I believe that's their seventh goal as the scorers play around with the numbers. So they move to 7 4 46. The Co op to Hobart Tigers 4 4 28. 47, that might even be, Josh. Yeah, 7 5 47. I've missed another one on the so tally there. A clear three goal margin here up at. The TCA, and you just thought the Hobart Co-op Tigers need to capitalise a little bit more on these forward entries. A couple of behinds that could have been goals, and hopefully in the last five minutes they'll be able to convert some of these opportunities that they're... See, Horton stripped of it and was cleared by Michael Clark for Lindisfarne, but only cleared about 10 metres. In fact, where Michael Clark picks it up again and kicks along inside 50 for them now. 
Looks like Michael Clarkson got on the end of a handball. He's run inside 50. He's got a shot on goal there. So just the three disposals in that play and uh, getting it the length of the ground. But that's a behind to the Lindisfarne New, New Jet Blues. So Woods looks to bring it in for the Hobart Co-op Tigers. Thought about kicking to himself there. Does. And he's away. Kicks it off towards the grandstand side. It's marks there by David Clark for Lindisfarne. He never looked like dropping that one, to be honest. He did a great chest mark. Puts it inside 50 now. Looks like the Tigers have ended up with it. Is it actually in the back line all of a sudden? He might be, yeah. I think no, so. Back and sweeps the handball to his left. It looks like he's got Newman, I think. Newman kicks now on the left as well. Coming towards the half-forward flank now for the Tigers. But Apted can't get there first. He runs into Ooh. his man. He then gets a handball off to Gray. Gray going backwards now for the Tigers. Bit of retreat to go forward here. He's got Mark Young, I think it is. Beautiful kick. Kicking inside 50 there. Reeves oh. can't take the mark. He's put it down on the second one now. As Fitz is wrapped up with the ball for the Tigers. Could have been Nichols, no, even Nichols. with that tan. Uh, as Lindisfarne's Josh Young wraps, it, wraps him up. Nichols never really wanted anything else to happen then, but a ball up, I think, Josh. Yeah, I don't think he was uh, trying too hard to get that one out. Just trying to lock it up there. Nichols gets again, tries to get taken high, but he can't. He gets a kick away now. And Linda's far running away with it through David Errol Clark, who handles. It's to Trent Clark, the brother, giving him an easy possession there, but he's taken it over the boundary line and missed out on that posse. So he handles now back to the umpire. Have a throw in in the left forward pocket for the Tigers here. Reeves goes up in the ruck, but Willing gets the hit out. Straight to Sullivan. It's on the left boot for the Tigers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! Roscoe Hugo putting that one through for the Tigers there, about 35 metres out. Alex getting a bit excited there when he, he, he whoops into his microphone. And Apologies, boys. <laughs> That's a great uh, left foot shoot. Really apologise to the <laughs> listeners out there. I'm not going to because Sullivan's uh, just kicked an opportunist left foot goal, so hopefully uh, some of the excite- supporters will be as excited as I am. So the Hobart Tigers move to 6-5. Uh, no, 5-5. Five, five. Yep, five, five. And Lindisfarne, 7-6. So 13-point lead to the Lindisfarne New Jet Blues as the Tigers use Fitz out of the middle. He kicks to his uh, bold brother in Nichols. Ooh, Ooh. Who lays a bit of a crude tackle, unfortunately, on his Lindisfarne opponent. Not happy about it, the opponent. Probably Ooh. just trying to strong arm He's in front of his yeah. mates. And as Trent Clark will win the free kick here for the Blues now. Probably no need from that from Clark. It wasn't wasn't too bad, but he moves it on now. And there's a contest, so that's what happens when you muck around. And Newman is off. Kicks it long towards the goal square. I've got a one-out Fish Reeves. Drops a chess mark on Jamie Mitchell. There's Josh Young there gets the handball out now. It's picked up by Callum Mitchell, who gets slammed by Leek on the boundary line. Probably keeping it in, but... I think they've called a throw in there. That was a great hard-hitting tackle from Charlie Leake. He's a bit slow to get up. Yeah, a little bit sore there, I reckon. Looking a bit worse for wear from it. See now it's thrown in for, in the left forward pocket for the Tigers. Reeves pushed there, but Willing will get the hit out. No, Reeves gets an impact on it. Comes away through Joey Miller now. Big clearance for Lindisfarne. And Horton goes up for the Tigers and does enough to, enough to s- slow the Lindisfarne clearance coming out of the back line. We see now Lindisfarne bringing the ball across through Case Miller. It's coming out the middle of the ground now. And there's a couple of tackles there. The ball's spilled free. It's intercepted by Jacob Campbell for the Tigers, who puts it out to the left wing. And I think Horton mightn't be able to see for the sun there, certainly covering his eyes. So he's reinforcing the recurring theme today here. Well, there's a holding uh, going on off the ball, and the free kick comes from the veteran in Braslin. Sends it long towards the Tigers' 50. Kicked off the ground near the... Uh, the boggy area on the... Ooh. And just like that, it's half-time. Just like that, it's half-time. So here we are at the TCA ground. It is the co-op tour to Hobart Tigers, 5-4-34. Oh, in fact, 5-5-35. Trailing the Lindisfarne New Jet Blues, 7-6. 48. Sorry, I had to do maths then. 7-6-48. <laughs> And uh, Tigers showing a lot more fight in that quarter. They're kicking the 3-3 to Lindisfarne's 2-3. We thought it might have been a little bit of a fizzer at quarter time, but the Tigers putting a bit more life back into this game. Mm, so, uh, half-time assessment, gentlemen. Uh, the Tigers back in it, definitely. The Tigers back in it. They played a really good quarter of footy that quarter. They started to win some clearances and um, get first of the footy. So, they'll be looking for two more quarters to beat what is a quality side in Lindisfarne. Um, 
I can't see them doing it at this stage, but they're certainly in with a hunt if they can play their best brand of footy. So. I'm going to back them in, Josh. I think that the boys uh, know that the finals spot is on the line. I'm going to back them in from here. I thought that was a great quarter. They probably could have kicked 5-1. Let's have a difference of opinion and see, see what uh, transpires in the second half. Excellent. So we're having a, a gentlemanly bet, I suppose. No money's actually changing hands. Um, so it's half time here at the TCA ground between the Co-op Toyota Hobart Tigers and the New Jet Lindisfarne Two Blues. Edge Radio 99.3 FM. And if you're listening online, edgeradio.org.au. The umpires are leaving the fields. Uh, the spectators are getting a chance to kick the ball around with the kids. And, of course, don't forget, um, we're going to play a couple of tracks and then come back and talk about Leslie Muller. Is that what was written there? Celeste Miller. Sorry. Celeste Miller. Are so we talking to Celeste Miller about the... Um, having trouble ribbing your scribble, Josh. The kicking for cancer there, so the GI cancer fundraiser. So, so we're going to come back uh, after a couple of songs and uh, we're going to play the interview with Celeste Miller. Uh, Josh did it just before the game and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, also what's going on here at the TCA ground between the two clubs as well. So let's play a bit of Cat Power to take you into half time. This is He War. You're listening to Edge Radio 99.3 FM or edgeradio.org.au if you're listening online. My name is Alastair and currently I am at the TCA ground because we are covering the uh, Hobart Tigers versus the Lindisfarne New... New Blues? Two Blues. Sorry, I'm getting that wrong. Uh, I've got my co-hosts with me, Alex and Josh. Josh, it's a special day really, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's a big day here at the TCA Gram. We've got the awareness for GI cancer, and there's a, a memorial of um, Mick Miller, who was involved in the Lindisfarne Footy Club, and his son Case playing today, and they're trying to raise awareness for their dad who passed away through, oh, Mick Miller, sorry, who passed away through esophagus cancer, one of the many types of GI cancer. So you had a chat with his daughter, Celeste Miller, uh, just about all the details uh, and things like that before the game, and we've got that recorded interview to play right now. Yep, let's hit it. Let's hit it. I'm here with uh, Celeste Miller from the Lindisfarne Football Club. And Celeste, uh, it's a bit of a big day today. Do you want to explain what's going on here at the TCA ground? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Josh. Um, so both seniors um, teams today are playing for the Miller Midson Trophy, which is in honour of my dad, Mick Miller, and Terry Midson of the Hobart and Lindisfarne Football Clubs. Um, and it's a fundraiser today called Let's Kick Cancer um, for the Gastrointestinal Cancer Institute, GI Cancer Institute, where we're raising money for them. Every Lindisfarne goal is actually going towards the GI Cancer Institute. And do you want to explain just a little bit? There's a bit of a personal story behind it. So, do you want to explain a little bit about your father or his involvement with Lindisfarne, perhaps as well? Yeah, sure. So, um, Dad and I would quite often, well, every Saturday, go and watch the uh, football, go and watch Lindisfarne play. So we'd be going to far out places like Signet and Bothwell and Tribunna and Dad would never miss a game of um, cases. So we followed Lindisfarne quite strongly for about eight years. Um, unfortunately, Dad was diagnosed with esophageal cancer last year and passed away just three months later. So that was sort of um, a big shock to us and we definitely miss him the most on Saturdays. So that's why we've decided to make it a footy fundraiser and raising funds for the GI Cancer Institute. Obviously, a big one today. So, your brother's playing playing today. Is he, yes. So, case is number forty three. Um, actually, my cousin Ollie, he played in the under eighteens, and he's injured his uh, knee. So, we're hoping that that's not um, something that's forecast for case as well in the seniors. Um, but yeah, case will, case will be playing on the back line this year. Last year, he was playing on the forward line, and um, people his employer actually kicked in um, $200 extra for any goals he kicked so it was quite nerve wracking for him last year, ended up kicking four goals so it was a great day last year He didn't kick, didn't kick too many behind so hopefully he would have been feeling the pressure uh, so GI Cancer Foundation, um, what sort of areas do they have? There's a few sort of types, is there? Yeah, so gastrointestinal cancer is actually the most common form of cancer and it includes bowel cancer, kidney cancer, liver cancer, uh, stomach cancer, throat cancer, all of those types of cancers. And even though it's the most common, it has the lowest survival rates. So the GI Cancer Institute raises money for um, clinical research trials and that aims to um, increase the life expectancy of those cancers and people who um, suffer from them. And we're able to donate today, so if any listeners are tuning in, um, how do they donate? 
Yeah, that'd be great. Um, so you can just Google the Everyday Hero account of Celeste Miller. We're actually doing a bike ride um, in Cambodia in October. And so all funds today raised are going to the GI Cancer Institute through that fundraiser. Well, thank you very much. It's certainly a very important cause. I hope people listening in can relate. And it's good, good, certainly good to hear a, a touch on the story and um, raise awareness for the cause. So best of luck with it and thank you for having, coming on. Yeah, thanks very much. There we go. That was Josh's chat with Celeste Miller uh, for today's special match, which is to celebrate her dad, who has unfortunately passed away through esophageal cancer, wasn't it? Yeah, it certainly was, and um, probably a cause that's touched many people, and I'm sure everyone close can relate to um, personal tragedy, things like GI cancer. So if if you're able to donate, I encourage people to support the cause or even just to talk about it and raise awareness for the... Uh, and a big shout-out to Slater and Gordon, who are giving $100 for every Linders Farm goal uh, towards the cause as well. So that's uh, more positive stuff going on in the community. So let's get our minds back onto the game. The guys have just wandered out onto the field again and are doing their leg exercises to get warmed up again. They are. You can, sorry, Josh, you can see the players are uh, just with the green armbands. Um, which is uh, commemorating the GI Cancer Institute. Uh, the boys trying to get pumped up. Sort of, uh, they'll get in in front of uh, Sam Rees, the captain. They're in a bit of a circle here, and the boys will try and um, sort of ward off any Lindisfarne attack to the what is usually the scoring end here um, up at the TCA. Uh, they're only down by a couple of kicks, so hopefully they can hold them off this quarter and really uh, come home strong with a win and uh, get this win that they need to try and lock in that final uh, position in the finals this year. So we were just chatting about... Uh, it's a, there's a good chance Hobart will make the finals uh, if they play well. What do they need to do to win this game, though? What do you reckon? I reckon kick straight, make the most of the opportunities that the midfielders are, are working so hard to give them up forward. I'm sure that, that is a bit uncharacteristic anyway, so I'm sure the boys will um, do that. But I think um, Alistair this quarter is going to really uh, set the scene for the rest of the game. The Tigers need to stay with them uh, and not let Lindisfarne kick away with the wind. Yeah, they just need... I think they need to be first to the footy as well. I think that's pretty important. They certainly showed in that quarter they can be and they they weren't in the first, which is when they lapsed, so... Mm. Yeah, Lindisfarne is definitely a team that if they get to the footy first, they'll use it well and really really punish you as they've showed all year being, being one of the top teams in this SFL competition. Yeah, undefeated. So uh, it's going to be a mountain to climb for Hobart, but I reckon they can probably do it. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling positive. I've, I've backed him in, Alistair. I'm on with you. So uh, Josh, is, Josh is optimistic, but uh, yeah. he's also a realist, I think, Josh. So. <laughs> I'm happy to be proven wrong, however. This is uh, it. Don't forget, you can send us a message here uh, as we call the game. The SMS number is 0427 334 336. And uh, we'll read out your message on air, most likely, unless it's something salacious. Then we'll, have to, we'll have to avoid it. It's been playing on my mind all week, Alistair. I think we were talking a bit about man buns and everything last week, and I yeah. may, may have dropped a few names. I'm, I think I'm just trying to work out the difference between a man bun and a top knot, because I believe just a casual top knot oh. is what I might, may have been referring to. So. so instead of the man fountain? Yeah, yeah. So maybe I'll be able to sleep at night now. So apologies uh, for getting those two styles confused as we see a little bit going on here. Getting a bit chippy early on, isn't it? Yeah, we've got Stevens, uh, a bit of pushing and shoving with uh, uh, David Clark up at full forward, one of the Clark brothers. Steve-O letting him know all about it, but he's definitely a gentle giant. And Mark Young just choosing to stay out of it on his bigger opponent, uh, Ma- Michael Clark, the other Clark brother. As the ball's balled up. Big hit out from Cunliffe there, hits it wide for Lindisfarne. There's, now it's run onto by Nick Hutchinson. He can't pick it up. The Tigers have got the footy for the first time this quarter. And it looks like a free kick there. I'm just trying to wait and see what that one was for. I think he's... No, he's bowling it he's up. He's jumped the gun and he's bowling it up. He's yeah. not spilled free. Yeah, very early call there. So Horton gets a tap for the Tigers. But it looks like Miller, Joey Miller's going to pick it up for the Blues now. He can't do much with it and it spills out. Troy Cunliffe now gets the handball way along the ground, but it's intercepted. And I think it's leaked for the Tigers. He gets it on the right foot now, wheels into the middle. We're getting in and picks it up. He tries to outrun his opponent, breaks one tackle. Oh, beautiful to kick. The left. It's got Sullivan it's on the half forward line. H- Sullivan's hit Huxley up about 25 metres out, taking the chest mark there. So beautiful ball movement there from the wing with Leek uh, through the middle to Ganinen, who shrugged two and has delivered to Huxley. Uh, sort of directly, almost directly in front, about 
What do you think, about 30 metres out? Yeah, not too far out. He should go back and kick this one. But I'm backing him in. I'm backing him in here. He wants, he wants to get the boys up and about early, and it'd be a great reward for that midfield movement. He comes in now. He ambles in once again. It's gone straight through the middle there. Not, not much doubt about that one. And you can hear the boys celebrating that one. So Hobart moved to 6-5. Uh, and Lindisfarne on 7-6, I believe. So just the seven points in it as the Hobart Co-op Tigers uh, look to, yeah, take out the game over the Lindisfarne New Jet 2 Blues. Yep, and just looking at that now, that's Huxley's third goal for the day. So we talked about the, the battle between Huxley and Rees for the Tigers' leading goal kicker. And I can confirm there was, in fact, one between them at the start of today. And now there's two. So Huxley in the lead there with 33 for the season. I'm sure it's just a side side thought in the back of their heads. I think just getting this win will be enough. But, yeah, definitely to be the uh, cherry on the cake. Linda's farm with a big clearance now coming inside 50 to the contest. It looks like Michael Clark's taking the grab there. He puts it on the boot quickly. Not a very good kick. It's almost going out of bounds, but just through for a behind there. Didn't rate that one, Josh? No, not much of a kick there. A bit rushed, a bit scrappy. So Newman, Newman will bring it back in for the Tigers playing on now and going to the left. He kicks long now. The three Tigers there, the three Blues. Oh, beautiful kick. And Woodsy's mark. taking the mark for the Tigers. Kicks it wide to the wing there. Leave it's it like Murphy? Yeah, I think it might be. No. It is. He moves it inside now to Rees, takes it out in front, and we're getting towards the centre of the ground as the Tigers are kicking up towards the athletics track end. But the kick, unfortunately, is turned over, taken unopposed by a Lindisfarne player who plays on now and kicks it out to the scoreboard wing. Hits a target. It's quite hard to see who the players are with this. But James Mitchell is going to it, aren't you? Yeah. He's going to say it. No, don't say it. Don't say it. He kicks long now. It looks like Reeves will mark for the Tigers across half back there. Good grab to the tall man in Reeves. He's been everywhere, Reeves, the last quarter and a half. Yeah, um, everywhere but up forwards. We're talking about that thing. So he kicks short now and back to Campbell, who comes across the line for the Tigers, bringing it out the other side. Ali's got to mark this. He does so. He burns the running mark young with a handball, but he kicks short to him now out wide on the oh. flank. Oh, I thought he was going to get cleaned up there, but he's taking the footy away now and gets the kick out wide. He's got Sullivan, who has two to beat. He keeps it in front of him and it's carried over by Callum Mitchell for the Blues there. Sullivan doing well not to cough up too much ground. So well moved by the Tigers out to their uh, rarely used uh, river wing. Ball comes back in now. There's a big tackle there laid by... Joey Miller for the Blues. Ball spilling free. Brendan Alley picks it up for the Tigers. He's grabbed by a couple. I think it's Nichols is grabbed by a couple now. And we'll have a ball up across the middle of the ground. So did Brendan Alley used to play for Lindisfarne? He uh, he played there a few years ago, and he played there last season as well um, before a couple of years with the Tigers. So moved around a little bit. But might he be looks- a little bit of rivalry there, probably copying a bit from his former teammates. See now Cunliffe picks it up across half forward for the Blues. He handballs. It doesn't go to anyone in particular, but it comes inside 50. Hobart clearing the ball now through Murphy once again, I think it was. He's got Sullivan. Sullivan kicks. It's on the wing now for the Tigers. Can't quite pick it up now. Lindisfarne will probably bring it back in here. Looking like a long kick towards half forward. It's in the direction. It's a good contest, but no one can take the mark. Mark Young fumbles for the Tigers. And comes out the back and cleans Ooh. up his own mess, but he gets smashed and the ball spills free finally now. Lindisfarne player can't quite get the kick away. He's caught holding the ball. It was Oliver Rand. By Michael Woods. As he toys with the idea of switching the play. So the River Rand uh, had a pretty big game against the Tigers last time, but no goals as of yet. So Woods switches to Newman. He's way out now on the scoreboard wing. He's got Godfrey, but he can't pick it up now. It's picked up by, I think it was Woods, was it? He kicks inside 50. It's in a half forward now for the Tigers. There's a kick away there. The Tigers have got a goal there. I think it was through Murphy, that one. Hobart getting their second goal for the quarter now. They're moving to 7-5-47. I'll get it right one of these times. To Lindisfarne 7 7 49. So the Tigers have, have. I'm just having a couple of technical issues here at the TCA ground. 
but it is Lindisfarne in front by a couple of points as the ball comes back to the centre of the ground. Well, I've got a headset issue. Oh, no. I see Lindisfarne peeing long inside 50. It's in the Michael Clark direction. He takes a chest mark off to the right about 10 metres now. He'll line up on a 45-degree angle here, looking to put the two blues a little bit further in front. Only the two-point lead at the moment. Just in front of his opposing number six, Jimmy McGee. He's certainly taking his time. He's got about a 30-metre run-up for about a 10-metre kick here. So uh, very interesting approach as he comes in now. He's trekking through the mud. He puts it on the boot. He puts it through the middle. Lindisfarne have taken the lead out to eight points here and they've got their first goal for the quarter. And, uh, they're up and about. Josh with that one. A little bit of niggle going on in the square, but hopefully a bit of colourful language going on here as well from the, the Lindisfarne supporters. But hopefully the boys can just get their heads in the game here. There's no point having a wrestle when uh, there's a game to win. Certainly right there. And we'll see the ball coming back to the middle of the ground now. The Tigers will be looking to get the line back pretty quickly here at the TCA ground. So go a little bit echoey now. We will ball the ball up in the centre of the ground. See Horton up in the ruck for the Tigers. But Willing gets the hit out. Looks like Fitz has run onto him for the Tigers. He gets a handball away. He's called for a throw, but advantage now, and Cunliffe will bring it inside for the Blues. Michael Clark was one out on his own, should have taken a mark there. He doesn't. He gets tackled, but he breaks the young tackle. Mark Young tackled. Kicks long in to the square, can't take the mark. Is number 15 for Lindisfarne. You know, brilliantly punched through Under there the by Rand. Michael Woods over Rand. So, Jacob Campbell looks up, hoping for an option, and he spotted out Horton on the scoreboard. So, oh, the... Grandstand wing and Horton takes a nice contested mark. He plays on now towards the middle of the ground. Bit of a dangerous kick. Uh, Looks like Apted's picked it up. Apted has off to Ali. And he's moved that forward to. Oh, Nichols who drops the chest mark, but he's. He's, used he's, his he's got Apted back. Old Dusty Martin look alike. He gets a handball back to Nichols now. Through the middle of the ground. Oh. Nichols showing the pace. Nearly falls over. Just gets a kick out in the tackles. Picked up by fellow ball man. Fitz with a handball. But. A little bit Ooh. going on in the middle of the ground there. I'm not quite sure what that was about. Looks it's like Apted. Ted. You don't... Apted's uh, quite a good boxer, I've been told. Oh, Josh, so probably, probably not someone willing, you want to... So probably someone, uh, despite Willing being bigger, probably not someone you want to wrestle with. I've seen so, Willing throw a few. So just as it that... wanders out again, uh, I, I think I've got the technical issue sorted. Yeah, apologies for that if uh, that impacted on anyone's listening experience. But we're back and away here at the TCA ground. It is the Lindisfarne 2 Blues, 8-8-56... Leading the co-op to the Hobart Tigers 7-5-47. We're probably about 10 minutes into the third quarter. We see now Linda's farm bringing the ball away through the middle of the ground, but not for very long before. Oh, no, they've got it out now. Avoiding another stoppage there. But Campbell impacting on for the Tigers. I think Horton falls over and gets a kick away now, scrapping it forward. There's a tackle laid there. The ball springs free. It's called for a throw. It will be a... So, Great guys, I was just looking for a good moment because we've just got the uh, latest scores from around the state uh, come in via SMS. Uh, SFL halftime, Pembroke Park, Sorrell 8 3 51 with, versus a Signet 6 11 47. Quarter time at Shark Park, we have the New Norfolk uh, guys 7 2 44 versus Dodgers Ferry 2 1 13. Latest scores in TSL, halftime at Bell Reeve, Clarence 6-5-41 versus Glenorchy 6-2-98. Halftime at Windsor Park, Launceston is 0-3-3. Um, North Launceston 7-5-47. And the latest scores in the AFL, third, three-quarter time at the SCG, Sydney 12-12-84, uh, Port Adelaide 3-5-23. Half time at the MCG, Melbourne 9 2 56 versus Hawthorne 7 9 51. If you're wondering what you just missed there, Nichols took a mark in the goal square, lined up about five metres out, tried his best to miss it, but he put it through for a major for the Tigers there. The kick going a little bit left, but doing enough for a goal. So, so the, t- the Tigers only down now, Lindisfarne 8 8, uh, the Tigers 8 goals 5, so a three point game. See now the ball coming back inside to the Tigers 50 here. A couple of tackles laid there, and Lindisfarne bringing the ball back out now. Coming to using that wide 
using that width of the ground here and they've got the handball back into the middle now finally can't quite get a clear tackle and it looks like Callum Mitchell stripped of it with a tackle from a couple there coming back out through Bradford who handballs to McGee he gives it back to Bradford they've got it now and Flanagan kicks across the face a little coming across the half back now Fitz picks up for the Tigers he gets tackled by a few he can't quite get rid of it now but we'll have a ball up Approaching half forward for the Lindisfarne New Jet Blues here. So the Tigers looking good this quarter, Josh? Yeah, they've uh, started pretty well. They've kicked 3-1 to Lindisfarne's 1-1. So Tigers have been really dominating this play since quarter time on the scoreboard, certainly. So. Can you remind me of the score? The score is 8-8-56 to the Lindisfarne New Jet Blues to 8-5-53 to the Cobb Turret Hobart Tigers. So just the three points in it at the moment. It would be some sort of revelation if the Tigers could pull off an upset here. Would indeed, but they're certainly playing like a team that uh, looks like they're every chance of of pushing Lindisfarne all the way to the end, Josh, so far. Yeah, well, their life is on the line today. Uh, they really they really need a win or a very competitive result here, any chance to play in that five. So They're a team playing like it. And Lindisfarne now get that ball towards half forward from a couple of stoppages there. Campbell lays a tackle for the Tigers, and we'll have another stoppage at half forward this time for the Blues. So it looks like we'll have Horton to uh, contest the tap. Uh, Lindisfarne's second man up goes as Campbell uh, races an opponent to the boundary line. Keeps his feet, does Campbell. And then, uh, unfortunately, toe pokes it over the line. So we'll have a ball up around the 50 on the river side. Uh, 50 out from the Hobart Tigers goal, that is. Yeah. As they look to kick a goal to put themselves in front of Lindisfarne. See, the ball comes back into play now. It looks like Woods attempts to get the hit out for the Tigers, but the Blues running off with it now. Case Miller picks it up this time. He gives a handball off, and the kick comes now inside 50 for the Blues. There's three there. No one can grab it. Quick tap away from Campbell. Clever thinking there. As McGee and Stephen Shepherd put a Shepherd on and make sure that ball goes out of bounds. Nick Hutchinson couldn't quite run onto it there, the uh, young fellow from Lindisfarne. Uh, still under 18, I'm told, playing senior footy and undefeated side, so he's going well. I was a bit confused before. It's actually here in the Hobart's defensive 50, so sorry for the slip as Lindisfarne send it in once again. Stevens well, can't take the mark for the Tigers. Did he hold his opponent or was he held? But no, Newman brings it out the other side for the Tigers there. Looks like Shawnee Gray will run on to it now. He picks the ball up on the line. He takes his time, steadies, and kicks short there. Looks like it's a grab. Leek's got it again for the Tigers. He is he goes in through the middle. He gets oh. smashed with a footy, and he's called for a throw. So he's getting one up there, and he uh, gets his shove back into the dirt. That chaser from Lindisfarne was Luke Briggs, who's an under-18s player. Really quick, quite a small, slightly built player, but definitely uh, took it up to Charlie Leek there on the wing. See a big kick there from Matthew Tringrove. is marked deep inside 50 by Michael Clark. And a little bit of uh, argy-bargy going on here, as they would say. The man on the mark gets heckled by a Lindisfarne player. Horton was lucky probably not to give away a 50 there. A little tap to the chops. A little bit of probably, a... probably deserved the uh, Lindisfarne players getting right into his ribs. So ignored by the umpire as Clark lines up for his second or third, yeah. Josh. Oh. Um, sorry, where is One it? of the two. Second. As we see, Oliver Rand sort of rolling a few of the Tigers players here, probably trying to buy a 50, but... Looks like Clark's put it to the left there, or behind there to the New Jet Blues. He's hit one goal three, so he hasn't had the most accurate day here today. It's a great result for Hobart, that miss. Uh, as they look to really go into three-quarter time with a lead, or at least as close as they can to uh, the Lindisfarne New Jet Blues. They're currently four points behind. Eight goals five to eight goals nine. Short kick there by Campbell. was marked by Stevens right in the in the mud there. His opponent is stuck. And now he gets the kick away. He's got Godfrey on his own on the wing. He takes the mark in the long sleeves there and gets the kick down the line. Quick kick. The Tigers now making the most of it and playing on quickly is Ross Hugo. He kicks inside 50. Looks like Bradford's got the handball away now. Ooh. Godfrey's got a quick handball away, and I can't see who's giving it to him. But there's a free kick now. The Tigers bring it away through the middle of the ground. Now Lindisfarne switching the ball as, as they inherit it there. Declan Crawford, I think, was taking the mark there and taking a long kick now. Coming inside 50 now is the footy. It's got Callum Mitchell has the ball on the half forward. He goes short. 
He's got Oliver around the Reverend. Will he line up for goal or is he going to going to dish it off? He loves a goal. He's going. He's having a shot. A goal. He's had a shot. It's a pretty good shot from 35 out, but it's gone to the right. Oh, trying to claim the mark. Trying to claim the mark is Matthew Tringrove on the goal line. I don't was, think so, umpire. Yeah, I reckon he held that Tringrove. Yeah, that was probably, awfully close to a mark, wasn't it? It's probably blindsided. So I think the goal umpire has he overruled him or has he paid the mark? He's paid the mark about. 10 centimetres from the goal line. That's right. right on I the th- behind post. You see, he brings him round now. Probably hasn't brought him round far enough. But maybe that's my black and gold glasses shining through. A few options for Linda Sarm, but he's, he's electing to take the kick, I think. I can't quite see what's happened there. He's, in he's, fact, put it, not even, yeah, out of bounds on the full, straight across the face there. Um, didn't even move towards the goal line, really, so well, eventually did, going out on the full, but... You get my gist. As Newman will bring it back in here for the Tigers. Perhaps Linda's farm being wasteful this quarter. Um, they not cert- something I've expected to say, but they certainly have been, Josh. That was uh, an opportunity gone begging for sure. Probably wanted the goal more than there were definitely a couple of short pass options on. I thought, but uh, Hobart have moved it away now and they kicked it inside 50. And there's actually bowling over his opponent nicely, putting it inside 50. But there's no one there for the Tigers. Sammy Godfrey is chasing them down though, as he will. Reeves with a big tackle here. That could be. Oh, that's close. He's gotten it out just in time. Has the Lindisfarne player. I think Reeves gets to the ball now. Lindisfarne still bringing it out though, but they're being pressed hard here for it. As the Tigers player is picked up and thrown away from the ball now, and we'll have a throw in on the boundary line. Probably 35 out for the Tigers goal. And Lindisfarne 8 9, 57 leading the Culp to Hobart Tigers 8 5, 53. So, certainly a close one here at the TCA ground. If you've just tuned in once again, you're listening to Edge Radio 99.3 FM. The ball is thrown into play, and we'll have yet another stoppage here. I thought there were a lot of stoppages last time these two sides played, but um, might be topping it today. Oh, I don't think it was that bad, was it? It's not, not that bad today, anyway. Uh, we've had a lot more free throwing play in the last quarter or so, but maybe it doesn't seem as bad because uh, the game's a lot closer. Yeah, that's possibly true. We see now Lindisfarne get the ball away, and oh. Callum Mitchell has fallen over. Oops, a daisy there. Michael Clark handballs to him now, and Callum Mitchell gives it back to Michael Clark, who kicks long inside 50 to the square. The Reverend can't run onto it now. In fact, no. Stringo's got a free kick. No, so he's given one away, and the Tigers run away with it now. Newman picks it up. Three bounces now as Newman uh, approaches. Handball over the top. He's got Flanagan. He's missed Flanagan, who picks it up now. He's got to beat two. He can't stick a tackle on him, and the ball's coming back inside for the Farn. Briggs picks the ball up for Linda's Farn. He gets tackled by a couple. It's pretty congested stuff here. Mark Young picks up, kicks short, clearing it for the Tigers. Reeves' handball gets turned over now. Linda's Farn with a footy across the middle of the ground. Hobart finally showing something here and bringing it forward now inside 50 perhaps to Dylan Huxley. He marks around about 50 metres out. Certainly very good pressure across the middle of the ground there from the Tigers. I thought they'd lost the ball and were going to get burned a couple of times and they just sort of didn't. So we're looking at a shot at goal. Looks like Huxley's coming in now. The big redhead, he comes in, he puts it on the boot. It's very straight. Now it's gone left late, but a very big kick for a behind to Huxley. He's kicked three goals, three today. Certainly having a lot of the footy so far. And the Tigers move within three points now here at the TCA ground. So that's 8 6 54. Uh, to 8, 9, I believe, 57. Uh, Lindisfarne just leading the Hobart Co-op Tigers up here at the TCA. Probably towards the the last five minutes, maybe, of the third quarter, Josh? Yeah, I would have thought so. And uh, been a pretty good game of footy here after what we thought was going to be a bit of a drubbing at the start of the match. And certainly on paper it looked like a bit of a one-sided affair as well. Ball coming back into play in the middle of the ground now. Tigers can't quite grab it. Looks like Linda's going to get some sort of clearance away here, but not very far. And they're being pressed. Every time a player picks a ball up, they're swamped with the tackle by the Tigers. Michael Clark can't take the grab on half forward for the Linda's fun, but they're coming inside now with a couple of handballs. To oh, kick straight great out pressure. of bounds. Oh, that is putrid. Great pressure there from. Uh, Looks like the ball's gone Callum for the touch Newman. shot. I couldn't quite see who laid the kick there, but he's on the 50. And the mark would be probably 49 metres now. 
as the Hobart player brings it back in. So that was Jacob Campbell with the pressure there on the wing. Him and uh, Newman are never too far away from each other in the half-back line as he might even kick it to Newman now. Or no, he looks to Alex to send it long out towards the players' race. Well, Horton can't take the mark. He's brought it to ground now. Looks like there's a big tackle on the Tigers player and the ball spilled over for a throw-in once again. Absolutely pristine conditions here at the TCA. Bar the mud, mind you, but the weather's been uh, very good today. The weather's been great. Hopefully can dry up a couple of these uh, swamp holes, Josh, as the uh, Lindisfarne New Jet Two Blues lead the Hobart Co-op Tigers. 8-9, 57 to 8-6, 54 are uh, the tail end of the third quarter up here at the TCA. Ooh. And we see a free kick there. I think it's going away of Lindisfarne from that stoppage. Didn't quite, didn't quite catch what that one was for, but... Must have been some incidental contact somewhere. The gentleman below us with the colourful language will let us know all about it, Josh, regardless. Great uh, contested mark taken by Michael Woods, their defensive 50 for the Tigers. He has. He's been involved. That was a one-on-two. Alex to give the handball to To Newman. Newman will run now for the Tigers. There's a good block there from Murphy, I think it was. Newman kicks long. Nichols falls over in the mud. Godfrey's falls over as well. Looks like Lindisfarne will clean up now and bring it through the middle of the ground. Three Cunliffe. Cunliffe comes through the corridor, that big man, one of his, he kicks, but Mark Young's taking the mark on his own in defence for the Tigers there. The two Lindisfarne players not really presenting there, and Young comes back through Newman through that left-hand back flank for the Tigers. Newman on that, that characteristic run again, he comes out wide, it's a long kick, looks like Horton can't take the mark, he falls over, trying to grab it, but now it'll be... Now he brought to ground here. The Tigers in through getting in and can't quite pick it up. He's taken high. Gininan will take the kick in the centre square for the Tigers. Right in the middle of the right on the middle line of the centre square. He kicks inside 50. I think it's Reeves has taken a great mark there for the Tigers, just in the shadows of the trees. He'll go back about 50 metres out, and I reckon he'll have a kick. I reckon he'll have a shot here. You back him in for this one, Fitzy, or... Gininan, is it? It looks like Reeves, isn't it? Reeves. Sorry, my bad. The Sun. Just make sure now. The Sun. It's definitely Reeves. I'm going to back him in here from from here, Josh. He's kicked a couple of big goals from here in his Hobart career. Um, He's a big game player, Reeves. So, yeah, yeah, I'm going to back him in. Certainly is. uh, And he comes in now. We've backed him, Josh, he's and he's kicked put the it goal. through. It's a major there. So the Hobart Co-op Tigers hit the lead here at the TCA. 9-6-60 to Lindisfarne, 8-9-57. Uh, kicking four goals this quarter, I believe, Josh. Yeah, they've had a really good quarter here. And uh, they say the third quarter is the premiership quarter. Well, in, in this case, maybe it's the quarter that might um, show some resurgence from the Tigers and push them September bound. Let's hope so. The uh, Lindisfarne, New Jet two Blues previously undefeated, so let's hope that this would give the Tigers great confidence uh, should they secure a finals berth. But there's been a free kick given away in the middle to Lindisfarne, so they hurriedly kick it out towards Michael Clark again, who takes another mark for Lindisfarne in a very similar position to his last two. So his Mark Young was just a bit undersized there and just a brilliant delivery, really. Quickly moved from the Lindisfarne midfielders. And he's been dominant today, Michael Clark, but he's finding himself with one goal three, so he needs to make the most of this chance or he'll be copying it from uh, everyone. It's probably a bit of a bit of an easier kick than his last couple, which were probably 15 metres closer to the boundary, but probably you'd expect him to kick this, Clark, really. He's we'll go close. We see about five players standing in front of us trying to skewer the sun with their hands over their eyes here. He comes in now. They try and put him off, but... No, they might have put him off. It goes left. There's six blokes there. <laughs> about three of them get hands on it. Goes through for a behind to the New Jet Blues, and Sullivan will bring it back in now for the Tigers. He goes short, and he got he has Campbell in the right hand back pocket. He has McGee if he wants him. He goes further. Woods can't quite take the mark, but he's brought it down nicely. In fact, his opponent has beaten him to it, and will bring it back in. Does David Clark? Campbell has three to beat there. He does well, and McGee gets the handball out for the Tigers. Horton runs in, grabs the footy and is probably slung oh straight into the ground. Oh, my goodness. 
I'm not quite sure how that was holding the I'm ball. I'm going to say it now, Josh. That's a terrible free kick played by the umpire. It's fun kicking along now. Stevens will be looking to impact the toes. Clark can't take the mark as him and Reeves jostle on the ground now. Woods gets a handball back out wide for the Tigers. There's no one there. Horton moves to it now. He's taking the ground again. And the ball spills free. And the Lindisfarne player just just sort of wobbly knocks the ball out of bounds. Not quite sure what he was doing there. Uh, he could have picked it up and had a shot on goal. But he, he's happened. a bit excitable, young Briggs, for the uh, Lindisfarne too, Blues. Uh, an under-18s player. I played him in, in the last reserves game and he's worked his way up to the senior side, which is a huge achievement in an undefeated side. As Lindisfarne try to bring it back in towards the 50, sort of a bit of an up-and-under kick. Oh, Ganinen rides a bump, shakes two tackles off to young, young, who's immediately wrapped up. That was a great tackle there. This is this game's gone to a new level in the last minute or two as far as pressure. As it's, soon as the Tigers hit the front, and Lindisfarne not very happy about it. It's been some great footy, and definitely you can see the Lindisfarne players trying to respond, certainly with aggression and uh, maybe with some good footy too. Now a kick from Matthew Howe brings it into the middle of the ground where Aftead marks for the Tigers. He hasn't had much of it, but he's been good when he's had it. Great he mark there by Tassie. Across the, to the left-hand side of the ground, coming across the back line. Leak might have been pushed there, but Lindisfarne coming back as the siren goes there. See the Tigers 9-6-60, leading the Lindisfarne Blues 8-10-58. By two points at three-quarter time here at the TCA ground. The Tigers taking it right up to the undefeated Lindisfarne New Jet Blues here. Can we have a boil over or will the predictable result of Lindisfarne remaining undefeated ensure... There'll be no boil over, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Bucking the trend there, uh, we non-favoured scoring, and uh, the Tigers managed to turn that into a bit of a a bit of a renaissance as far as scoring goes. They so. certainly did, Alistair. Kicking was it four goals that quarter? Four goals too. Did just the one four for Lindisfarne? Oh, so that's... very quiet in that quarter were the farm. Lindisfarne maybe needed to take a couple of those opportunities. Uh, Clark has been quite dominant up forward. Michael Clark, that is number six for Lindisfarne, uh, but just not able to convert. Only may, maybe kicking one goal three so far, so and a couple of uh, kicks that haven't made the distance. So, yeah, look, the Tigers, that was a great quarter as they look to stretch this lead further, kicking to this scoring end. Uh, hopefully the crowd can bring them home and uh, look to secure that finals berth and defeat uh, the previously undefeated Lindisfarne two blues. Tell you what, uh, just to, to prove that what we're seeing here and, and battling with the sun, I'm going to post a picture on Facebook. <laughs> just head along to facebook.com forward slash edge radio 993 FM and uh, you'll get exactly the same view as what we're getting now. Um, for the moment though, let's play some music and then come back and hopefully we'll have a bit more of a action, a really close action to finish up this game against Lindisfarne. Keep it local. Edge Radio. This is... Yeah, all right. Be quiet. <laughs> this is Edge Radio 99.3 FM. Uh, me forgetting it to put a stop in on the computer and being accused of uh, liking Limp Biscuit. I don't know what... I, I'm, I'm kind of ashamed. Apologies Alex. there. Uh, Alistair, I was hoping to keep that one offline, but uh, the ball's bowled up. We'll get back to our Fred Durst <laughs> and the crew later on as Hobart clear it. Towards the 50, Nichols streaks away, gets a tap down to Ganinen. Ganinen diving here, he can't quite clutch with that left hand. And the ball goes to ground now. Might be a free kick coming out of it, but it should just be a stoppage. Blow the whistle. He's yeah, playing the whistle. Has he? We see yeah. now, thankfully, the sun is at ease at the moment. There's a big cloud has come over the top of it, probably only just about the only cloud in the sky at the moment here. See, um, Tigers picking the ball up now through Fitz. He gets tackled. Might yeah. have been high, but we'll have another ball up. Probably a fair call from the umpire there. Just while uh, we've got to stop in play, let's take stock of where we're at in this game between uh, the Co-op Toyota Hobart Tigers and the New Jets Lindisfarne 2 Blues. What's the current score? We've got the Co-op Toyota Hobart Tigers 9-6-60, leading the Lindisfarne Blues 8-10-58. So just the two points at three-quarter time. So the Hobart Tigers in that last quarter fought back, uh, kicking four goals to one. So uh, hopefully they're kicking towards what is usually the scoring end here at the TCA. See Hugo gets a kick out for the Tigers in the clearance. Reeves marks at about 20 out. And Fitzy can't contain his excitement. Nor can I now as Reeves will go back and hopefully put one through the middle here early for the Tigers. Hit Chance. us on the window, Fish. Hit us on the window. Chance to make it an eight-point lead. And the question came through during the break. Uh, has Lindisfarne been behind at three-quarter time during this season? 
We're not quite sure, actually. I'm going to say no. I know they've had some close games, but I think I think uh, I'm going to say no. But so we'll, we'll, we'll chase that one up, Alice. There. See, Reeves comes in now, and we know one thing: they're behind by eight points here. Reeves has got his fourth. The Tigers lead by eight points. An upset is on the cards here at the TCA ground. The Tigers going getting a goal within just the first couple of minutes of the last here. And, of course, uh, I just want to remind everyone of the SMS number, 0427 334 We have Josh Munsing, Alex and Alistair here up in the commentary box. Of course, Josh is a Hobart Tigers man, and Alex is too. A <laughs> little, little bit going across here for... Oh, that's unusual. Looks like Nichols might have given away a free kick out of the centre there to Lindisfarne. So Willing will take that one from the centre circle. Kicks down the line now. Right on the 50 here. No one can take the grab. It comes to ground. Mark Young, I think, with the handball there for the Tigers. We get a kick away now to safety with by Campbell. But it's not that safe. It's taken by Matthew Howe, who will bring it back in for the Blues now. He kicks to the left-hand side. McGee might outmark for the Tigers. No, it looks like his opponent's got it, but he's bumped off it. And the kick goes 10 metres. Great bump there by Marcus Fitz, uh, causing the kick to go nowhere. But Lindisfarne have tumbled it inside the 50 again. Through Miller there with a big kick. Now we see Ali pick it up for the Tigers. He handballs to Stevens, who kicks wide now. They're finally getting a bit of clearance that here could be from off that. Here. Sullivan's Ross. off on his own, I think. He... No, Ross Hugo, apologies there, Fitzy. Kicks it long, tumbles it long to Nichols, who needed to probably do more there, but it, there was a two on one as uh, Matthew Howe floated across. Oh, and Huxley's stolen a grab there. He just pinches it from Willing, and he brings it back inside. He's got it in and 35 metres out, all on his own. His opponent, Callum Mitchell, was nowhere near him there. And he might go back and have a shot here. Well done there by Huxley to cause that turnover in the middle. And uh, I'm going to back him in and in, Josh. We've been backing him in all day. We're not going to stop now as he's probably almost directly in front. I'm going to oppose you on this one. <laughs> I think it's going to be... How dare you? Oh. oh, I think Alistair might have shaped it here. It's He's gone to the left. You needed to have faith, Alistair. I just thought he off had to it. the left there from getting <laughs> in it. It went straight, uh, stayed straight. So It was straight and true. Straight yeah. and true. Didn't deviate. As Josh Young from Lindisfarne looks to bring it in. Short Lead kick. Made. Ooh, very, very sneaky kick. And uh, that was just taken by Nick Brazel and the club veteran as he kicks it off towards... The halfback flank, great contested mark there taken from Callum Mitchell and he moves it on quickly to the wing. Off to Case Miller, off again. Uh, they're moving it back now, a bit of pressure from the Tigers, but they've managed to tumble it towards the half-forward line where a great contested mark is taken from a Lindisfarne player. Can you see who that was, Josh? I think it's David Clark. No, it's Michael Clark. Apologies. Goes it inside was. 50. Long kick now. There's a few there. It goes to ground. Still trickling through in the Lindisfarne square here. Looks like Stevens has put it through for the Tigers there. Uh, behind the Lindisfarne clawing the lead back to, I believe it's eight points now. I believe so. So we've got Hobart, 10-7-67. Uh, uh, Lindisfarne, 8-11. It's at 59. So, yeah, an eight-point lead to the Hobart Co-op Tigers. Five minutes into the final quarter up here at the TCA. Woods marks for the Tigers now on the wing, right in the middle of that sludge. It's dried out now with the sun, but it's, it's well-baked mud, that's for sure. He kicks, but Matthew Howe's on the end of it. The Howler, the coach of the Lindisfarne under 18, brings it back through the middle of the ground. He's got the big man in, Toddy Willing. He is a big takes man. The mark. I wouldn't want to cross him, that's for sure. He kicks short now. Looks like a grab taken by Cunliffe in the middle of the ground, right in the centre circle here. He plays on, gets around the man on the mark, Willing to the left now. Kicks over the top of Horton, inside 50. Blues can't quite take the mark, but there's a free kick coming out of that stoppage, out of that contest. And, and it looks, looks to be a Lindisfarne free kick, probably about 20 metres out. So uh, the captain, Troy Cunliffe, moved that around quickly, kicked to a contest, and uh, we're not quite sure what the free was for. Maybe a bit of high contact uh, laid in that marking contest. Looks like someone's in a bit of strife here. I'm just trying to see. It looks like it might be an injury of some sort. Perhaps blood rule. Can't quite work it out. This player is down on his knees. It does look like play has been stopped. And they're calling for the stretcher, the Lindisfarne, or the doctor, the Lindisfarne players. So just see what pans out here, Josh. I see Cal Newman standing over the top of the Tigers. I can't quite see who's down for the Blues. He's standing up now, but he's certainly not in great sorts. Number 45, perhaps Justin Myers. Just trying to work out what exactly is going on he's here. He's getting marched off the ground, I think. So everything looks to be... 
uh, relatively okay. Well, that is one positive for him. We hope it's not too bad. So currently we've got the Hobart Co-op Tigers on 10-7-67, lead Lindisfarne 8-11-59. Yep, and it's your man Fitzy lining up here is Luke Briggs with a footy now. The little fella. So, yeah, probably, probably easy to take high Luke Briggs, but he does show a lot of courage and a lot of pace. And, um, I really hope he misses this one. But, not uh, not sure if he's turned 18 yet, but he might be having a beer to celebrate if he gets this one. He's, he comes in he's now. He's got a bit of facial hair, uh, Josh. The left. So. It's through the middle. He's got a goal there. That's his first for the day. He does love a goal, Luke Briggs. Um, that's a very timely goal as he uh, goes for a breather on the bench. So Lindisfarne, unfortunately, moved to 9-11. Is that... 65. 65. Thanks, Josh. Uh, tig- and, Tigers are on 10, 7, 67. So, so two points now here at the TCA ground. It is very, very close. Uh, don't forget 0427 334 If you've got something you'd like us to comment on, that is the SMS line. So we've had a couple of great games back-to-back. Hobart... Um, trumping New Norfolk last week by 10 points, and this is a two-point game currently. Willing that two-point long inside lead. 50 for the Blues. Sorry there, Fitzy. You're right, Josh. Uh, you've got to call the action. Oh, that could be Briggs again. Sorry, Clark brought down. He's thrown it, apparently, so the Tigers will have a free kick coming out of the back line. Well, he's had a heart attack there, Josh. Don't want two re- quick St- goals this quickly uh, together. Stevens has handballs now. He's got Newman. He'll run again. He's been running all day here, and he runs past his opponent there. Kicks it down the line to the wing. Apted can't get there for the Tigers. Norkin Horton, but he's wrapped. He's wrapped up Willing there. Now we've got Miller's board to ground for Lindisfarne. Ball coming out the side now through Matthew Howe for the Blues. It's coming back to 50. Can't quite take the grab. Stevens can't get there either for the Tigers, but Campbell picks it up now. Sells the candy. Handball's out wide, and the Tigers are away here through Brenton Alley. He tricks through the mud now and kicks short. They're steadying there. I think Apted took a mark and then dropped it late, but he's been paid, so they will give me a chance to take a breather. Apted now with a short kick, uh, wider still to uh, Bradford, brings it in to the Tigers 50, and Reeves oh takes a great juggling mark against two right on the boundary on the 50 on the river side of the Hobart forward line. He's, he's run around a bit. He's give, improved his angle. Yeah, he's pinched about 15 metres off the boundary line there. He could kick to one of the high leaping forwards in Godfrey or Nichols. Uh, he's also got Huxley in the square, but just not sure. It looks like he might be having a shot here, Sam Reeves. Will to... be a captain's goal coming up here. We'll find out in just a moment. But he comes in now. He's got the right sock pulled up higher than the left, just in case you're trying to picture this one. Comes in now, kick looks all right. Just trying to see if it goes over. It's off hands, Nichols keeps it in. Godfrey's kicks it into his opponent in the square. Sullivan picks up for the Tigers. Probably ducked into it, but surely oh. taken high by Cunliffe. Wrapped around the neck there. That's pretty harsh there, umpire. That's a high tackle, nine times out of ten. There was no ducking in the knees with Sullivan. He's not that kind of player. But anyway, great tackle laid there anyway by Cunliffe to lock it up. Sullivan's got the first hands on it now for the Tigers. He's grabbed by a couple. They're appealing for ball, but that's not happening, surely. In the jack in the box, Nichols almost took the mark from that Reeves kick there, Josh. Yeah, not happy with me last week was Nichols. I said he was a bit of a pest to play on. I'll probably stand by that one if you're listening later on, Nico. See, Linda's far now trying to get it away. Oh. Sullivan probably taking high again and knees across the back, but play on is the call. <laughs> Linda's far come across with it now, and Howe kicks it long. It's marked by Stevens there for the Tigers, who's gone from half back. And taking it in the middle of the ground. He kicks wide now. He's got Brendan Alley who marks on his knees. To... Oh, Nichols just a bit early with that lead there. He kicks it to Reeves who was taken high. Trent Clark taking the mark there for Lindisfarne. A couple of bits of high contact probably going unnoted here by the umpire. So he's put the whistle away now. Fitz picks it up for the Tigers. He's trying to keep it in now. He steadies and does so. Kicks it now. Inside 50. Can't go to hands. Can Godfrey lay a tackle? No, it's away for Day- Errol Clark for the Blues now. Kicks across the middle of the ground and Lindisfarne will have their turn of attacking now. Errol Clark kicks. He's gone to half four now. Alley's intercepted for the Tigers. He handballs back. There's a, there's a tap on now and it looks like Newman runs away once again. He's been busy today. He's got Nichols but bounces on a 10, stays up. Nichols handballs inside 50 to his opponent there in for Zachary, who will clean up now and handballs through to Case Miller who kicks. A lack of awareness there from Nichols. He had a couple. The dangerous inside position, but uh, unfortunately, Lindisfarne are a well-oiled team and are able to mop that one up. So 
So Rand kicking now from the wing. He brings it back in for Linda's Farm, but it's not going to anyone. And Horton picks up across half back for the Tigers. Kicks along the centre half forward where Huxley's hoping oh, to mark. A, a pretty good grab taken by Callum Mitchell, who's sort of come in third man there. Fantastic grab back in the flight with Mitchell into the pack, and he's up straight away. He comes wide now. He's got the edge of the square. It looks like Huxley's taken. Oh, Reeves has taken the mark. Apology. No, someone to Reeves. Yeah, someone to Reeves. Is that Mitchell Reeves. again? Yeah, I think it was. Now he kicks out wide. And Lindisfarne coming across now through Josh Young. He's got time and space. He kicks it short. And it's a grab taken there by number 38, Matthew Phillips. Just that sun you were not so happy about, Josh, starting to... Yeah, it's resurfaced, unfortunately. Creep in again. Then Lindisfarne getting dangerous here. It looks like Joey Miller there, but he couldn't hold on to it. Now they're coming across through Jack Anning. He's been quiet for a bit, but he kicks inside 50. And the mark taken there. I can't quite see who it is, in fact. Well, he's played on. He's played on and put it through. Michael, the Michael Clark player. has played on and put it through for a goal. He's got two goals, three for the day. Lindisfarne have their second of the quarter, and I think they've hit the front. They have, them. Josh. They moved to 10-11-71, uh, while the Hobart Co-op Tigers are sitting on 10-7-67. So a four-point lead to Lindisfarne, uh, and Hobart will look to... Uh, hit the front straight out of this stoppage, I imagine, Josh. About halfway through the final quarter, I believe. We've had a few stoppages. Yeah, about halfway through, I reckon. We see everyone on the edge of their seats there. The back of the bench is not getting much use, but it's a thriller here at the TCA ground, and Lindisfarne back in front for the first time in a while. But it looks like Reeves is taking it for the Tigers. He kicks inside 50. It's in the Huxley direction. Bounces, runs onto it. His opponent, Trent That's Clark, deliberate. just punches it out. Surely deliberate oh. there. The Guys in the crowd, but nothing doing. The umpires aren't doing a whole lot lately, Josh. You don't want to criticise them. They do do a good job generally, but... They're so busy trying not to make a mistake, they're not paying anything, I think, Fitzy. Well summed up. You see it's thrown in now. What happens here? We've got Linders Farm with the hit out now, a handball out wide. Looks like Josh Young has kicked long. Can the Tigers get on the end of it? No, they can't. That's a good grab there. Quick hands through the middle. It comes through Nick Hutchinson now. He plays on. They've got it across the half forward line. Have the Blues streaming in now. Oh, he <laughs> burns the option. They've taken a mark across the half forward line there. He looks to be uh, lining up and having a shot, Josh. In fact, so sunny that I can't see through my sunglasses pretty much. Lining off across the half forward now are the Blues. They're four points in front. They'll be looking to make a 10 with this kick. Comes in now, and the kick is very low and to the right. In fact, yeah, to the right through for or behind as the Tigers look now to bring it back into play. It's a great result for the Tigers there. You wouldn't want to go two kicks down. But having said that... In fact, I didn't even see it. Was that Cunliffe with the goal? It may have been. He's uh, wobbled it forward. That was quick. That was too quick. Uh, apologies to all listeners. We are looking directly into the sun. Uh, but Lindisfarne seemed to have tumbled a goal from that kick in. And they now lead the Hobart Co-op Tigers by 10 points. 10-7-67 to 11-12. Sorry, not by 10 points, by 11 points. 11-12-78. Seventy-eight. Yeah, sure. Yep. See the balls away now, and the Tigers be looking to get this forward. They have done so. It looks like Sullivan now, but he fumbles, and his opponent runs away with it in Errol Clark. But he's wrapped up pretty quickly there, so it didn't didn't burn Sullivan too much. But the Tigers looked away. Errol, David Clark, affectionately known as Errol okay. to those who thank, know him. Thank so. goodness, uh, the nickname's okay. We see Cunliffe now streaming away from Lindisfarne. He breaks the tackle, goes inside 50, kicks long. 20 metres out of mark is taken by Lindisfarne. Looks like they're flexing their muscle right at the moment. Cunliffe really showing why he's probably a favourite uh, for the medal this year by just really having a captain's quarter so far. Yeah, it is Michael Clark has taken the mark once again. So he was inaccurate early, Josh, but he's already put one through this quarter. Unfortunately for Hobart, he has put it through. And the Tigers are fading away at the moment. Their hopes are hopes are quickly being dashed here by the very strong Lindisfarne Blues outfit. The score now moves to 12-12-84, leading the co-op to go to Hobart Tigers 
10, 7, 67. So the lead out to 17 points here. And Hobart needing the next goal, really, to stay in touch here. They've got to really dig deep here, Josh. They've got the week off next week and uh, everything on the line. They've been probably fantastic so far. You can't really fault the Tigers. So hopefully they can uh, just claw a couple of goals back and make this an... Uh, Really close contest in the last 10 minutes of the quarter Holland here. Misses kick. Hugo gets a handball. Horton can't get on the end of it. And now the Tigers are still looking to get it forward. Hugo's got it again. He handballs out wide. They're on now. Newman gets it for the Tigers. He oh. kicks into the middle. Beautiful. Caught me by surprise. Beautiful kick. He's got there, Leek on vision. half forward. He kicks long now. Got Godfrey and Reeves. Neither of them can take it. Callum Mitchell's got the mark. He's been great on Reeves this quarter. He and has, Josh. That's, that's his third contested mark on Reeves. He comes back now. He's got Joey Miller, the prize recruit from Hobart City this year, on half back. He goes down the wing. It's a long kick. There's a lot of players there and can't quite see who's taken it. But oh, in fact, it's been dropped to the ground and we'll have a free kick, possibly for a throw. Looks like Michael Clark's got it again. He's been very busy this quarter. And he comes across to half forward where the mark is taken now. Probably too far out to kick a goal here, but they'll be looking to bring it inside 50. In fact, he might be backing himself here. The kick hasn't quite carried. It's about 20 out now. It's like number 43, Miller, picks it up for Lindisfarne. He tries to burn Fitz. There's a handball on now, back to the middle of the ground. Handball misses the target, but it's still on here. There's a couple more of them, but the ball is just trickling along the ground, and no one's quite taking any ownership here. Bradford tackle for the Tigers, but it's still going along. Still trickling along the ground as Sullivan lays another tackle. And Lindisfarne now streaming forward. Oh, tries to hack it out fresh of air, Fresh airy from Manning there. I'm not quite sure what he was doing. And the Tigers finally bringing the ball out to their wing. As Ganinan takes off now, he'll show pace through the middle and he kicks long inside 50. Reeves needs to take this one. Oh, He has taken it. And he needs to put it through the middle as well. The job is half done for this play. He'll go back about 30 metres out straight in front and he really needs to kick this to keep the Tigers' hopes alive. Great uh, vision there from Ganinan. And interestingly, to draw level with Dylan Huxley in the goal kicking uh-huh. stage. But so I think we focus more on the four points at the moment. What's the special hand signal for him to aim at you? Um, I don't know. I've been giving a few thumbs up. Yeah, the hands up like this. I'm he just kicks it straight him... and true. He's got you in between the eyes. He might, may well do. I just, I'm just going to let him do his thing. He's kicked he kicked, it. He's kicked he's it. Hit me. Oi! He's got the stats man there on the chest. And that's a goal to the Tigers. That's their second for the quarter. They move back to within 11 points here at the TCA ground. You ripper. Got a couple of little mini Josh Muntings down below us. Running around with the football. I'm not quite sure I have red hair, but that's all right. See now the ball coming back to the centre of the ground. What are you saying? That's a bad thing? Josh. No, I'm not coming. I won't speculate There's on There's some ginger in your beard, on. man. There uh, is some ginger in the beard. That there's is ginger in everyone's beard. There's a few gingers on the field, actually, so we'll probably try and shift the topic to the play now as uh, the ball up goes. Horton wins it down, but uh, it's... Anning again for the fine. It is, yeah. He's lifted Anning. He's been quiet today, but... That's a soccer off the ground. I think it was Matthew Tringrove there bringing it into the 50. Linda's fine away with a shot on goal oh, you're here. kidding. Gone to the right, but it's taken by Michael Clark on the line, pretty much on the right-hand side. Let's hope Clark uh, sprays this as he has. He was uh, up this end from that same pocket. And he, him, he, he has been the difference between these two sides this quarter. I yeah, I think uh, Cunliffe wing, winning out of the middle as well, and uh, certainly Callum Mitchell uh, patrolling the back line, taking those contested marks of all. Uh, got the Lindisfarne uh, two blues back in the contest. Looks like he's kicked it, and Linda's fine back out to 17 points, I believe. So it's punch and counter punch here at the TCA. Certainly is. They moved now to 13 12 90, leading the co op to Hobart Tigers 11 7 73. The lead back out to 17 points. Just Tigers still within a sniff here, but they need a couple of quick ones. They do, Josh. There's definitely enough time for the Tigers to. Uh, come back here, but they definitely need to, you'd say, kick the next two to have any chance of, of uh, you know, upsetting uh, Lindisfarne here, sort of definitely past the halfway mark of the last quarter at the TCA. And Lindisfarne now to Shane their dominance from the clearances again. They put it on late here, and Miller gets it away. Looks like a mark is taken by the Tigers across half-back. A Campbell kicks now down the line onto the wing. He's got Leek who can't out-mark two, and Lindisfarne bring it back across through Cunliffe. 
across the half forward line now for Linders Fun. No one can quite pick the ball up and get a disposal away here. See now the Tigers scrapping one away and Fitz picks it up now. He puts it on the left wing for the Tigers. He's got Newman. He's been busy today. Had a lot of the ball. He handballs across now. Oh, come on, He's got no. Fitz again. There's a bit of a fumble there and the Tigers have coughed it up and they brought it back through. Case Miller now, Linders Fun have. Just the trying line. to avoid that muck, I think, Josh, with a handball instead of kicking and it goes to the square and another Linders Fun mark. Maybe Michael Clark again. It's a near identical spot to the last one. You'd uh, hate to be playing on Clark today. He's been pretty dominant, and the delivery's been uh, top notch from the Lindisfarne midfielders. He's on the right forward pocket, only about 10 or 15 metres out. He should probably slot this, and it might bury the game for the Tigers. He's put it through the middle there. Lindisfarne out of 23 points. It was, in fact, Michael Clark with his fifth goal for the day. He now has the most goals on the ground, leading Reeves with four for the Tigers. And a little bit of voice going out, out, out from the crowd here. They're just sensing this one slipping away now. Perhaps it's the one that got away, but the Tigers just don't quite have enough in them at the moment. They've uh, put in three amazing quarters so far, Josh, and still, still time, a faint glimmer of hope, I think, and certainly time to run out the game for the Tigers and put in a four-quarter effort, but they've just got to really... Lift to the last, the twilight uh, of this match up here at the TCA. And the ball now moving about 15 metres across the ground before we have another stoppage right in that sludge. I expect to see a lot of desperation here for the Tigers. The, the footy's here to be won now. They've got to do it right now. They can't wait any longer. We see a, a lot of blokes over the footy and we'll have another stoppage standing up this time. Lindisfarne now looking to get the clearance away, but Newman just picked it up for the Tigers, gets a run on. Perhaps taken high. They've got to go handballs to Ganin, and he streams through the middle, beats one, almost gets caught. Oh, he's got to kick Gives it. Gives it to Gray, who fumbles. He's given back to Ganin, and probably taken high. Handballs to Godfrey, he kicks was. inside 50, and no advantage, says the umpire. Will he was be Ganinan. taken high there, Ganin. It's definitely taken high. Ganin will go back, maybe have a shot here. I'm not quite sure. About 50 out, almost a straight angle, so... We wait now just for the ball to be kicked back as it went out of bounds in the pocket. He'll kick this, Josh. He's called it. I really hope you're right, Fitzy. He's about 70 out. He'll give it a crack, but he comes now into the square. Nichols is there for the Tigers. He's outmarked. He's trying to do something that's over not, Callum Mitchell. But that's I'm not, not Mitchell sure again, is it? Yeah, Mitchell again, absolutely dominant from in this line in the back line this quarter. And Josh Young now has it on the flank. He kicks short. He has number 11, Matthew Hutchinson. He kicks to the wing. Looks like Mark Young might have got on the end of the Tigers. He marks handballs to Horton. He handballs again, and now the Tigers bringing it back through. Campbell on the wing. Kicks very wide. It's probably too wide. He had two players there, and he's missed the target. Couldn't, Brendan Alley couldn't quite get on the end of that one. Usually a great user of the ball, Jacob Campbell. I don't think I've ever seen him tumble a kick like that, Josh. But uh, again, pressure and uh, uh, pretty boggy over that side of the ground. But the margin is 17 points here in favour of Lindisfarne as the ball is thrown in now. Probably only a couple of minutes to play now. The Tigers need a pretty quick one here. The ball goes to ground. There's a couple more tackles. And now we see Lindisfarne streaming away. Cunliffe kind of looks like he had that on a string. He knew exactly where that was going as he took it away now. And the kick comes inside 50 for Lindisfarne. There's a couple there. I think it's Willing with the ball now. He'll run through and kick a goal from the square and seal the game for Lindisfarne here. Yeah, Josh, you'd imagine that's all she wrote up here at the TCA as Lindisfarne moved to a pretty commanding lead late in the quarter. They've just kicked the last four, I think, just to sort of uh, strangle any hopes of a Tigers uh, unlikely victory. We see now the score out to 15 12, 102 to the Co op Toyota Hobart Tigers, 11 7, 73. A commanding 29 point lead here now. And uh, certainly a lot of fight from the Tigers, but Lindisfarne have just just uh, flexed their muscle here in the last quarter and they've done been, a lot of damage. They've been running in numbers, Josh, in this last quarter. and uh, They've got seven think, go oh, six goals to show for I it. I think that's made all the difference. Seven goals to show for it, sorry, yes. Now the Tigers might have one last play in them here, but it's probably not going to be enough. We'll see another stoppage across the middle of the ground once again. They fought valiantly, the Tigers, today, Josh. I think this, this week and last week are probably the best two games of the season bar that thrilling Huonville win up here 
Gray handball to Newman, who smashed with it. Now Lindisfarne have the footy. Ali lays a tackle. The kick comes through somehow. And Fitz has it for the Tigers. He scraps the kick away inside 50, but it's marked by David Clark for Lindisfarne. He switches, does Errol, and he has... Who has he got? No one at the moment, but it bounces through to Callum Mitchell, who gets the kick out wide now. And Lindisfarne away again. Looks like they're coming through the middle of the ground now, right through the sun spot. They've got a mark, not quite taken. Now, I think the Tigers have the footy. I honestly cannot see a thing, but Lindisfarne now recovered the ball with some great pressure. And I think it's Ooh, Horton. It's on here. a bit of a scrap here. Reeves being held to the ground by a couple of players and attacked. We've got a runner going over there. I'm not quite sure what the go with that is. I mean, Godfrey's trying to stop it, but... Uh... You've got Mitchell on top of Reeves there, and he can't really do anything from that position. And the run must be a Hobart free if he's going to come over and do something about it, the umpire. The but runner uh, the runner runner Trent Clark it. Off, the, off Sam Reeves, so good work to the runner there. See now, Godfrey marking on half four for the Tigers. Pretty quick to get away from the scrimmage there and get the footy. He kicks to Huxley. He's bowled over by a couple. Nothing doing, though, and Lindisfarne bring it out now. Kick through Miller. Joey Miller, that is, down the wing. Lindisfarne now with handball, and there's... Pressing tackle out wide, but they've got the ball forward through Matthew Tringrove, I believe. It was the Mitchell brothers uh, wrestling with Reeves, so probably one sticking up for the other or or d- the old double team, Josh. Yeah, well, it looks like in the meantime, Linda's fine have kicked one, so about 20 metres out. I'm just trying to work out who's kicked it. I believe it was Oliver Rand may have his first for the day, as far as I'm aware. So the River Rand finally getting on the goal-kicking board. And Lindisfarne get their eighth for the quarter, putting it beyond any reasonable doubt now, as a lawyer would say. The ball coming back to the middle of the ground. What's your favourite legal TV show, boys? I'd probably uh, I'd probably run with Suits. But I do like Rake on ABC, so that's uh, pretty One of the great shows. Just, as well, just so. come to a conclusion, Not Rake. My favourite but... legal program. Harvey Birdman, attorney at law. <laughs> I've heard of it, never seen it, but never I know I know it. that uh, uh, Callum Upchurch from the Tigers, a big Rake fan, is the... Uh, there goes the siren. The siren goes. Linders Fun, two Blues have won the day today. They have finished on 16 goals, 12, 108. Defeating the Co-op, two out of to- Hobart Tigers, 11-7, 67. Certainly a very valiant effort from the Tigers, leading the undefeated Blues... As early as oh, as late as five minutes in the last quarter, but Lindisfarne getting the run on and kicking probably the last five or six goals there to make it look perhaps a bigger win than it was. Yeah, Josh, definitely a closer contest than the scoreboard suggests. But uh, look, I thought the Tigers fought really well today, so probably three, three and a half quarters. But uh, like you said, Lindisfarne just got that wind in their sails and kicked probably the last six goals to to put uh, the result. Out of doubt. So we got a couple of deflated tigers here in the commentary box. <laughs> they don't look happy at all. But um, fair game to Lindisfarne. They really stretched their legs and showed why they're top of the table and undefeated here at the TCA ground today. They certainly did. And best on ground for mine was probably Michael Clark. The time he stood up for Lindisfarne, he kicked five. Yeah, Clark was good. I, I was a big fan of uh, Callum Mitchell's last quarter. Probably took four intercept uh, contested marks uh, for Lindisfarne and uh, certainly delivered the ball well. I uh, thought uh, also in that last half, I obviously wasn't here for the first quarter, but I thought the captain, Troy Cunliffe, was really good as well with his delivery. As per usual, yep. He'll go close to winning the league, best and fairest. The William Leach medal, I reckon. Yeah, I've called it here first if he wins it. So he was good. Uh, also, Josh Young across the back line. Uh, yeah, probably... That's probably it from, from my opinion uh, for Lindisfarne. But who do you think uh, stood up for the Tigers today, Josh? Probably Newman bringing, bringing the run through the middle there. And the Tigers, after the, last, after the first quarter, were able to burn Lindisfarne through the middle quite a lot. I think he probably stood out for the Tigers, as did Reeves and Huxley with four and three goals respectively. But I thought Newman's run probably created a lot of it today. It does, yeah. Uh, Ganin and in patches. I thought Ali was pretty good again, especially in that first half. Uh, Marcus Fitz at times. Jacob Campbell uh, always uses it well. But, yeah, definitely... Uh, uh, Newman, uh, Huxley and Reeves they fought hard all day. So just looking across the board, we've got Lindisfarne with the goal kickers with Michael Clark with five, notably three behinds, but five goals nonetheless. Justin Myers with three, and then we had singles to quite a few in Luke Briggs, Oliver Rand, Matthew Tringove, Troy Cunliffe, Matthew Phillips, Todd Willing and Blair Fazakerly. And for the Tigers, Josh? We had Sam Reeves with four goals, three goals to Dylan Huxley, 
One to Corey Murphy and one to Mark Nichols. There we go. Uh, I forgot to mention Michael Woods. I thought he played really well, uh, taking a few inter- strong intercept marks across the defensive 50 for the Tigers today. So, guys, let's. Uh, we've done a bit of a summary of the match today. Uh, we've pointed out the uh, guys who have contributed most for both teams. Now, the big question is from here, what is it going to take for Tigers to play finals football? Well, I think that game against Hewanville is really going to sum it up. So in the last round, Hobart plays Hewanville. I believe they're sitting in fifth on the table. We're sitting in sixth by percentage. I'm not quite sure how Hewanville going today. Haven't heard a score from down there. But the Tigers need to beat Hewanville when they play them and get some favourable results in a few other games as well. That's true. They've got the week off, uh, Josh. Then they meet Signet who uh, they're sitting at one game apiece so far this year. The Tigers playing a really good game. Uh, the first time they met down at um, the Command Oval, uh, and then, unfortunately, Signet uh, with big Jason Laycock kicking eight up here at the TCA, uh, taking the, the cake last time they played. So that'll be a big game as well in the lead-up to the final round against Hewanville at the TCA. Just a uh, note over on the ground, uh, the Miller Midson Trophy about to be presented to the Lindisfarne New Jet Blues, and congratulations to them. They've certainly fought well today for the win, and we um, we are sure that Mick Miller has been remembered well by today's clash. Um, a very very close encounter between the two sides. And so there was a hundred dollars uh, donated from Slater and Gordon for every goal. How how what was the total in the end? We've got sixteen goals there, so um, maybe the go. few at Lindisfarne at the end were perhaps of benefit there. So. Mm. <laughs> so they're keeping it in the back of their mind. They just need a bit of a bit of a flurry of goals there. Uh, once again, congratulations to Lindisfarne. They certainly did put on um, well, a, perhaps a, a bit of a drubbing at the end there because the game was fairly close uh, up until the last quarter. Yeah, it certainly was. Um, well done to Lindisfarne. A uh, bit of a party time at the end for them, it was. Mm. All right, so that pretty much concludes the broadcast for today's game. Uh, I want to thank everyone for listening. I want to thank Josh Munting for anchoring the commentary team. Uh, and thank you, Alex. I can't even remember your surname, unfortunately. It's Gerald. It's Gerald. What's your surname? My, mine's Ling. There you go. There we go. We're learning, we're learning to work together. We are. <laughs> uh, it's been a pleasure, boys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you for participating. And um, oh, we've got a long list of people to thank uh, because this is potentially our last broadcast, isn't it? Yeah, for, at least for this season. Potentially the last broadcast of the year. So I'll start off. I'll thank um, certainly Rod Hunt has been a big driver. Um, I know Rod's listening up from the East Coast. So um, thank you for all your help, Rod. And it's great to get this going. Thank, uh, obviously, Edge Radio 99.3 FM for jumping on board. And... Um, I guess congratulate the Hobart Footy Club for having a foresight and through Russell Young and a couple of others of getting on board this broadcast. So I'm sure I'd also probably take the chance to thank the listeners. So it's not worth doing this if we don't have people listening. So thanks to all of you. It's mm. been really good to, to actually get local, local footy back on the agenda and back on, on radio through community radio. So. Yeah, totally. Uh, local f- uh, football and local sports is uh, not covered as heavily in the media down here in Tasmania, uh, it's uh, really up to the community organisations to take the lead and show it can still be done, uh, and done in a, in a quality way. Uh, I think... Uh, I don't want to blow my own trumpet, but I think Edge has done a pretty good job so far, uh, and uh, bigger and better things next year, I'd say. Let's hope so, boys. Let's hope we can uh, bring a few few of the close games to the listeners uh, next year. Mm. Uh, who else we got to thank? Well, I've got Rod Hunt. We've got, got Rosie thank, Hunt got as thank, well. Thank yourself, Alistair. For I don't want to thank you. myself. <laughs> I'll thank you on, on the behalf of the rest of us, I'm sure, and all the listeners. So. All right, cool. Uh, thanks to our stats man who has uh, been providing us stats all day. He's not, he's not going to say anything. He's the silent stats man. Uh, and, well, thank you to the Hobart Football Club for giving Edge Radio the chance to do some sports broadcasting and uh, especially local football. Uh, it's really important that uh, the communities um, actually get their voices out there and um, we support grassroots. I should also thank all the other clubs and the Southern Football League for all being very supportive. So Yes, uh, of them. course. Uh, thank you, SFL, for being very supportive of what we've been up to uh, and, and very encouraging as well. Uh, just can't uh, say enough. Um, ben Harrison was very encouraging for all the stuff we've done so far. So right. uh, watch this space for 2017. Um, that's all I can say. That's all you can say. That's all I can say as well. Watch this space. Uh, make sure you stick to uh, hobartfc.com.au uh, for all the details. And edradio.org.au is also a good place to make sure you keep your eyes glued on. 
Uh, let's boot this baby home and I don't know what else to say other than thank you for listening. This has been an Edge Radio broadcast here at the TCA ground of the Co-op Toyota Hobart Tigers who have been defeated by the Lindisfarne Two Blues. We'll leave you now with Young Galaxy. We have everything. <laughs>